It's my duty to please the booty. And Muzz got mad at me, the coach said, he goes, Jesus Christ, why don't you just wear two nines? And I went, okay. Ah, ah, switch the call. Please, please, please never do that. Yep. So. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 491 of Spit and Chicklets, presented by Pink Whitney from our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka, here in the Boston Sports Podcast family. What is shaking, everyone? What some are calling the greatest regular season ever. Has about a week and a half left of it. The season ends a week from Thursday. Pretty crazy, but lots to talk about, so let's dive right in. The Wit Dog, Ryan Whitney, what's new at you? Whit R.A. Dog. sounds rough. Oh, Oof. Dude, Long Beach voice is the new Vegas voice. Oh. <laughs> what do you make of that one, Whitty? I mean, are you surprised? He was texting like he was completely in one all weekend, so I actually thought he'd sound worse. So I think this is a win, R.A. That's good for you. I mean, I thought you'd sound horrific, and it's just sort of bad. What's up with me? Not much at all. Uh, Very interested to see once we get into this debate about the greatest regular season of all time and and your actual take after that vague tweet that we've known and become accustomed to coming from you. But in terms of me and my weekend, um, while you uncultured swine are watching hockey and hit from behinds and line brawls and headshots, I took in Broadway with my wife Ooh, and no. caught a play. Went to New York. Um, when did we leave? Left Thursday, got in around five, stayed till Saturday, left around 11. So a quick hit. They call it a baby moon in the business. Just a quick getaway before the baby comes. Now, our baby moon or her baby moon has gotten worse and worse with each kid, right? Before you have any kids, you can go rip it up for a week, and then you got one kid, you go a little shorter. Well, before the third, it's like two nights in New York City and the Excella. Here you go. But the play I saw, (laughs) what a performance by Jeremy Strong, who many people out there will know as Kendall from Secession. Biz, I know you don't watch TV shows, so you can kind of sit this one out. (laughs) <laughs> it was it was amazing. And I had been I'd never been to a play. I'd been to a musical. I believe on Chicklets I told the story before. Was, I want I want to say 7 years ago, 8 years ago, I took a muscle relaxer cuz I had a little kink oh, in my yeah. neck and oh, then yeah. I was second row and <laughs> fell asleep and like embarrassed it and I was getting booed. Um but this was that was a musical Jersey Boys. So this play dude it was it was, it was incredible. I, I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this play. And my expectations going in were kind of like, I was a little hesitant. It was two hours with no intermission. They ended up doing like a seven-minute break where they brought a bar down from like the ceiling and then you could go onto the stage and they gave you like, it was just like they'd give you a little shot. It must have been a sponsor or whatever this liquor was. Dude, I was like, I want this intermission, this break to end. Get me back to the play. So just I felt so cultured and then like dealing with you guys talking about line brawls and being scumbags. I just feel so <laughs> I feel so above you guys. I was, now. What's the play? I was What's gonna say, yeah, we gotta get the name of the play, but I was gonna say as far as activity in the group chat, like you were silent. I'm like, where is this guy this weekend? You weren't really chiming in much. Well the, yeah, we got yeah, so we got back Saturday um around four and then I was kind of real busy yesterday, Sunday. So it's called Enem- an enemy of the people or enemy of the people. And the premise of the 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 play is that um, Jeremy Strong is is a guy living, and now I believe it's a Danish, from Denmark play or book or story, whatever, from like the late eighteen hundreds, buddy. So this guy is living in this town, and he's a doctor, and he ends up realizing that they have like they call it the baths. All right, they it's like a it's a, obviously a town on a, on a lake or a river, and they have the baths, which I assumed was kind of like hotels and places for people to come and basically he talks about they had people who were sick and old come because the weather and the baths and everything about this town yeah, okay, was so right. beautiful and and in the end in the end boys I had to use it because <laughs> he finds out the water is poisoning the people from the baths no. and what he does is he realizes this and he says we have to close down the baths we have to redo the water supply people are dying we're thousands of people here are coming here every every summer and the town doesn't want to. And all the people on his side at the beginning, 
they end up turning against him, and he becomes the enemy of the people for trying to do what's right. This Jeremy Strong guy's acting. He's spitting the whole... He's getting so animated and, and aggressive in these different little moments of the play, and he's spitting in people's faces, not on purpose, <laughs> but talking. Yeah, 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 and yeah, he yeah. never wiped his mouth. You know when you get spit on your mouth? Biz, you always got spit on your oh, mouth. Oh, yeah, 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 You know yeah, how yeah. you can feel it, and until you wipe it away, it's like torture? Buddy, this guy's spitting all over the place and then never touching his mouth or wiping it. Just the power of acting and yeah. then the power of me being there and, and just being, like I said, classier than you three. <laughs> I had a great week. Oh, you stay awake for one fucking play and you come in swinging, eh? Well, you probably pop two Adderall just so you could stay up, you fuck. And Holy as far God. as, yeah, like sometimes I'll get on these rants and I'll have like a, a piece of spit on my lip and then it just so happens every time it happens... Fish will find a way to make, get it on the internet. So I got all the the the, the Chicklets fans in the Instagram comments. Yours is saying usually I got, white. Though, I got like Leafs like jizz all over my face because I'm glazing you're like them too a, much. Like yeah. Dog with rabies. Yeah, you look like Cujo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought the one guy on the podcast with rabies would be me? Ara. Yeah, shaka. Well, I like did. A, I did keep my hockey roots, or tried to, during the play, and then I'll end the play talk. You were probably watching it on your phone. No, so I, 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 he was, I, he was uh, jerking off the night next to my bet? vape. I had a bet that night. What was what was the uh, Friday night big game? Was it? Fuck. Was it the Islanders? I don't remember. But I went to grab my phone, and and she just looked. Oh no! Don't oh. you even think about it. Totally. Yeah, yeah. The, the phone didn't even get out of the pocket, but. I so, came close. I was uh, thinking of the game. Uh, obviously, this is just a trip with you and and uh, and Bree. Now, I, I've been told that you try to have sex more as the baby's coming to like ovulate, so it like actually comes out on time. Now, it was is that the case? Uh they say is that that, that could po- they they say that that could possibly help towards the end. Anytime she's willing and able, she knows I'm down. <laughs> So I, I, am I somebody who's going to sit here and kiss and tell about my marriage and mention what happened during our trip to New York? No. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You're going you to watch but the YouTube version for that But did I possibly get lucky in the Big Apple? You can decide for your own. Atta boy, Winnie. Atta boy. R.A., Bit. what do you got? This is going to be on Raya, Raya plus one for pregnant women. Oh, this, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, jerked oh. off in Long Island. <laughs> I think you're a sick puppy if you have sp- sex with pregnant women and it's not your girl and your kid. That's Do you think up. that's like a crazy take by you? What do you think? There's people out there smushing pregnant women all over the map? Uh, Have you been on Newport lately? How many that- pregnant women do you think are like sleeping around? I don't know, man. I think that there's probably a headline on on like Twitter or or Instagram, like probably once a month about crazy shit like that. I mean, it's it's happening. You you name it in the world, and it's happening. There's like I yeah, think there's that, like uh, yeah. I think there's like pornos <laughs> that are made with like pregnant women and like like oh like the the plumber comes over and all of a sudden you know the husband's. So I've heard. Yeah, I, I, I would be with you though that if if you're sleeping with a pregnant woman that isn't bearing your child you have some serious fucking issues. that's what i'm saying oh yeah that's yeah. what i'm saying that's all right don't get any times. ideas single ra <laughs> now all right i, I want to <laughs> before we talk about me and g's weekend i want to go to you you had a very very eventful weekend so you were in where long beach yes long beach long island it's just outside of queens it's where charlie mcavoy grew up choose me and there was a, a hockey memorial day for a, a young kid who was killed last year in a tragic accident garen hagan his name was and uh, just an absolutely beloved member of the community. I, I got to talk to his dad and his, his babysitter and some of his relatives and friends. And, you know, some people you meet because they're just above and beyond. And he was the type of guy. He was the captain of every team, a true leader. He would see, like, you know, younger kids or a kid maybe who's, you know, developmental disabilities. And he would gravitate to them because he, just to make them all feel welcome, he was that type of guy. So G called me, I think, Thursday. Hey, you want to go down to this thing? Where, where and when? I flew down Saturday morning, headed over to the place. And it was unbelievable. Like, the whole community, like, Long Beach reminded me of where I grew up, Charleston. It's like you know, a bunch of Irish people, firefighters, a lot of beer drinking right in the water. So I, I, I fit right in, needless to say. But there were two games. Uh, Toronto Fire played Nassau County Police, and then the FDNY played the Long Beach Guardians, which is made up of all kids from the community. And I'll tell you, they played their balls off. I mean, we know FDNY is a tough squad. Was- so the the FDNY team. The, yes. Like the one that yes. we're going to end up seeing in the 50th, yeah, two, 50th two anniversary weeks, yep. game. So do they kind of travel around doing these these forms of like exhibition? Oh, yeah. And, just, and, well, and, the, 
And so this was like a charity component. And how, how long had this game been organized for? Or was it like an impromptu pop-up? Well, this, this is the second annual one after okay. uh, Garen had passed away. And I, I don't know if they had the same teams as last year. But, you know, teams are always traveling and going to these things. And But I guess every year there's just Donnybrooks. And that's just like, oh, that's Long Beach defending the island. And, you know, it was a great game, a little bit chippy. Uh, fight apartment won it with five seconds left. And then the clip, I happen to be on the call for the third period with well, a color commentary. And that goalie, he wanted the smoke. And the other goalie, FDNY, he come bombing and met him. And Sunrise drilled him. I so saw later the that- blood everywhere. Who was oh, yeah. bleeding? I think it was the goalie who fell down who initially oh. wanted the smoke. Now, yeah. R.A., like, from, like, people listening who don't understand, they're thinking, like, charity game and, and for, like, an, an amazing cause and a celebration of life, yet these guys are, like, trying to kill each other. Like, it's just what? Like, that's just kind of like how everybody knows and, are, and is aware and how it operates. Exactly. And we saw a few last year. Obviously, that was in the big game, right? The, the 49th anniversary. So this just happens at even all the pop-ups they go to. Yeah, it's just, uh, I oh, guess, yeah. a very intense arena known for games like this. And I, I'll tell you, Paul, I hadn't been somewhere on the road where I like I felt so at home. It was just like, I, I said to you guys, I could actually live down this place and you know, you sing, sing like Irish rebel songs at three thirty in the morning. That doesn't happen in too many cities in America these days. And just the people it was so like warm and welcoming. And like I said, I, I met his babysitter. And she came over, and gave me a big hug. It was r- r- some real emotional moments too. And obviously, I did did know the kid, but just uh, I got a real sense of who he was and the, the turnout from the community. It was just a really, really special day, and I'm so so glad I went. Well, you know, thank you for sharing, and, and thank you for representing Chicklets as well, R.A. Now, uh, for those of you who might be a little confused, you can go watch this video. I think we posted it to our Twitter account. It's probably, is it on TikTok? It's definitely on Instagram. That's where all the uh, the, the comments were popping. And you could see the video of when the FDNY player scores. He's kind of like, is he like giving it the like, fuck you to the, to the, like, the biggest section? And then that's why the goalie's uh, wires crossed? Exactly. And I didn't realize that at the time. I didn't realize that was the, the Long Beach section. Yeah, he kind of gave a little, you know, he was very exuberant. Suck my wiener. That's what he was, he gave the suck my yeah. wiener gesture. Yeah. And uh, it, they were pissed off because I talked to some people. They thought it was classless, whatever. And obviously, I, I was like, yeah, I, I say it, it's ho- it's hockey. I mean, they fought after. I, I mean, I didn't realize it was that crowd, but it, it is hockey. It was a late goal, a very intense game, but it, it was all good. Everyone was drinking after then. Uh, I don't know this, what's hey, worse. That guy, winner uh, putting a puck who's in the, the empty 61? net. 61? Who's the guy 61 on fire? He was good last year, I remember. Is it Zay? 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 Did he get his head punched in at the end of that game? Is there a clip of that? I, I think, yeah, there were, there were four fights going on at once. It was like, and, and I remember he night. was the best player on fire, or one of them. I think he yeah. took a beating in that clip. I was like, but, oh, and also, do you remember I brought up the Oshawa Fire Department pounding everyone? And, and like saying we want to take well I had another town or city's fire department reach out and say fuck Oshawa they're full of shit when they beat New York New York didn't send their best players so now it's like and I gotta get who sent this one they're calling out Oshawa but Oshawa is standing firm in, in terms of we'll smash anyone and we'll play anyone anywhere anytime so the fire department police department hockey games I cannot wait for April 20th. Oh, the like, testosterone The NHL playoff is start, but for us, they kind of start the 21st because April 20th to me is FDNY NYPD. Yeah, and we're going to be streaming that game live on, on the Barstool.com website. Uh, it, it was We did crazy numbers last year. I think the game, it starts at 5 p.m. this year. I think it originally was supposed to start at 7, but they bumped it up probably for the Stanley Cup playoff reason, but uh, we're going to be live on the broadcast, all of us. I would imagine Army's there, Merle's there, Portnoy's coming, and and the whole kit and caboodle. Anything else you wanted to chime in with quickly, G, uh, regarding that game? No, I think it's going to be awesome. I mean, go watch the documentary. I think that's, if you want, if you don't know much about the game, we filmed a documentary basically all last season. We followed them around to these tournaments that you guys kind of referenced before. We went out to Vail with them. We followed them around for a year straight. So you can really get the background on that. That's available on YouTube, all of our video platforms. But it's going to be awesome. Like we said, we're adding some new characters this year to the mix. Uh, I'm riding with the police. I know I last year I took the police. Everyone else was on the fire. I police took the, the police ma- last year. Yeah, police are the underdogs. I'm just like, I like to ride with the underdogs. So it'd be awesome to see them win. No one is expecting them to win. So I got the police this year. I, a, a great, b- before we move on, a great pregame into the first night of NHL playoffs. And we'll talk about this. It's not till April 20th. I hope there's no afternoon NHL playoff games. I hope they start that night so we kind of get the five to seven slot for, for, for that game for the fire and the police. 
But we'll see. Uh, just a couple more notes, Biz. Uh, the, the goalie for uh, FDNY, Nick Tags, he, he come up to me. He looks like he's about 12 years old. He's like, hey, thanks for making make me go viral today. I was like, wait a minute. You, you're the guy who beat the other guy up. He's he's probably about 5'8". Like, he looks like he's legit under 20 years old. I was like, was that your first fight ever? He's like, yep, first one. I was like, wow, hell, first hell of a, one? For, yeah, oh, he's a, a oh, goalie. And he's going to be addicted to it after getting that internet pop, just like the wrestlers when they come out. What's up, guys? Wait here. Pink Whitney time. You see right here? A little shot of Pink Whitney. Sorry for anyone listening in the car. But Pink Whitney, New Amsterdam's own pink lemonade flavored vodka. The number one selling flavored vodka in the United States. Thanks to all of you. Thanks to you. And I think I said last week, it's Masters season. It's golf season. It's Pink Whitney season. It kind of all goes hand in hand. That birdie juice we all know, we all love. It's golf season. It's NHL playoff season. It's NBA playoff season soon. Everything's coming together with nice weather, and it's Pink Whitney season. So I want you to go on out to a bar, order it, order a shot, order a mixie, go down to your local liquor store, grab a big old bottle, that 1.75 I talk about constantly. It's the big daddy, the big dog, and get involved. Pink Whitney season, New Amsterdam zone, tastes great. Easy to drink. You feel great after you drink it. And I thank you for all giving it a try. So go right now to your local bar and grab one. Pink Whitney, take your shot. Um, I'll, I'll quickly, I had a pretty good week. Um, you know, I, I wasn't too hardcore dialed into hockey, maybe as much as I normally am. I uh, did the move into my place. So it's pretty much close to all said and done. I still have to do the outside and the landscaping, boys, but... Holy fuck! It's 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 a bit of a, a relief, man. Six months overdue, but it, it turned out it looks tremendous. Uh, shout out to my contractor, and uh, you know I've been kind of a nomad for a long time, boys. I finally have a house to be settled into, and uh, and I'm I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, on top of that, uh, Portnoy was in town for the final four. I got to meet Miss Peaches. Now I'm sure most of you uh, who are listening right now know who Miss Peaches is. It's the most famous dog on the internet right now. Uh, Dave Portnoy adopted it, saved its life, uh, has raised a ton of money for for uh, for charity and uh, what do you call them? Like, um, shelters. like dog shelters? Yeah, dog shelters. Boys, I I don't think it's offside to say that this dog is the biggest, the biggest pussy magnet on the planet. It's fucking any person, any female you walk by with the dog, Dave it has to stop. They all want pictures with Miss Peaches. Miss Peaches, Miss Peaches, Miss Peaches. So I was with my buddy Joey, and you know Miss Peaches was chilling under the table because you could tell she was just tired from all the sensory overload. And he posts a photo and tags it. He must have had 20 girls in his DMs popping off about Miss Peaches. So this thing's getting my buddies laid for crying out loud. So I don't have to adopt the dog? <laughs> I think that if you can rent Miss Peaches for one week RA, you will be loving life, buddy. You'll be the new Hugh Hefner. That's what I would label you as, the new Hugh Hefner. I don't think you want to be labeled as Hugh since yeah. some of the things came yeah. out since he yes. died. Oh. It's, not oh. exactly a, it's not exactly an ideal role model type figure. Oh, yeah. I didn't. I haven't read about any of this. So, yeah. may, yeah. okay, I guess we can move on. Sorry, yeah. Ray. Yeah. Just at you. one final note is I want to mention the foundation. It's uh, g2hfoundation.org. Uh, if anybody would like to donate, please do so. It's, uh, it, it funds a bunch of like local stuff going on, like tons of things. There's a whole bunch of... The, the, his, dad, his dad Chris explained what you know like, recreational programs, sports programs, like people in need. It's just a it's a wonderful thing that came out of such a tragedy. And, and hats off to to his parents and family because I I don't know how you you march on after something like that. And shout out to Long Beach once again. The support was incredible. But you guys are going to be on the road very soon as well. Minnesota bound for the uh, Frozen Four. Oh, I can't wait! I can't wait! I'm 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 now on the road for the next two months. I left Arizona on Saturday night, and and here I am. I'm in Atlanta right now. Uh, we got a bunch of broadcasts leading into playoffs, but I'm super excited. Gee, obviously you've been at the forefront of the college hockey as far as the Spit and Chicklets crew, and I think we've all just followed suit. I think it it, it's, it helps that you know Merles and and Wit played college hockey, so they've already known a little bit about the past of it. Wit, you jumping on with BU? Uh, I I I I've never been to a Frozen Four. I couldn't be more excited that the way that you guys have hyped this up. I am praying for a BU BC final. Just because I, I want to see the lead up with wit and the nerves. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, it's going to be absolutely insane. Biz, you're actually doing a meet and greet on Friday at Top 10 Liquors in Minneapolis. 
144 uh, Fifth Street. Uh, and then on Saturday, all the boys, myself, Wit, Army, Merles, uh, we'll be at Smorgie's Bar in St. Paul from 3.30 to 4.30 leading into the semifinals games. It, it's going to be an absolute finals, blast out the finals, there. The finals. Yes, and, and, and before the finals. I'm sorry. Biz, I think you're going to love it. Uh, I, I, I'm bummed. I can't be there Thursday for the semifinals games. I'm going to actually be at Barstool Chicago Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to be live streaming a mini golf tournament. It kind of it, it, it goes with the Masters, uh, needless to say. And, and you, you have three rounds Wednesday all live stream. And then there'll be a cut. I want to say maybe the top 10 players will finish the final round Thursday night live streamed again after the broadcast of the first round of the Masters ends. So if you watch the Masters first round like so many people do, maybe it's over and you can get tune into Barstool and see. And if Minahan wins it, I owe him five grand. Worst bet of my life. Um, and if he doesn't, I get 500. So hopefully I could maybe beat him to, to, to save myself all that dough. Uh, but then I'll be flying in uh, Friday, and, and I can't wait to get to Minnesota. It's going to be a time. Are you going to go celibate like uh, Tiger Woods? M my no, understanding, I can't believe that. My understanding is he's putting sex on hold till after the Masters. Uh, now, a buddy, a, an unnamed buddy said that to like the New York Post or something. It's, it's, I, I don't even know if I trust that. I, I, if, if anything's been proven besides being one of the, or if not the most clutch athlete of all time in Tiger Woods, it's that he likes to fuck, and I yeah, don't see him just fucker. stopping that out of, uh, he likes out, to, of, out of nowhere. I don't know. It, it's, it, you do save a lot of energy, and you do have a little bit more pep in your step with a heavier sack. But for a just boxing from personal match, experience. that might be good. Women weak in legs, Rock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mickey, what's his name in the movie? In yeah, Mickey. Mickey. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey yeah, Goldstein, I mean, yeah, you're boxing. You want to be angry. Ugh. But golfing, I feel like you need to be fluid in the mind and in the body and, and with, the, with the, the spirit of the game. Like, holding in all that cum can't uh, yeah. help you when you're trying to make a six-footer. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I could see where you're coming from with that one. Kind of rele release it, and then you'll just be a little bit more zen. Interesting. Yeah, but... uh, one, one quick thing I wanted to talk about before we get into hockey. What, uh, what's the deal with this eclipse? Like, Why is this one being talked about more than... than I'll let you take it over, R.A., for this. Because the internet is filled with conspiracy theory lunatics, and they tie it into the weirdest no, shit. No, R.A., that's, 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 that's not what. true. I mean, <laughs> yes, <laughs> the, the, internet is, true. the internet is is filled with lunatics and conspiracy theories. They're calling me a conspiracy theorist because of the cap circumcision stuff. It's a full eclipse, right? Uh, and, and I don't think it happens again for, I don't know, 60, 70 years, maybe a little less, 50, 60 years. I, I, I think it's probably a tad overblown. I'm also curious with you can't look at it. You need these special eclipse glasses. Like if you look at it, are you just going to go blind? I almost want to risk it. Yeah. But I went to 7-Eleven and got $3 eclipse glasses. So maybe I won't risk it. I, I, I think it's going to be somewhat cool. But in Massachusetts, I know maybe up in New Hampshire, you'll see it fully and complete. But it's, it's not everywhere in the country that you'll or North America that you'll see it like 100%. So Game Notes was talking about it, and, and Army thinks it's a farce. He thinks it's all a, a money grab for these goggles, these 3D goggles. Big goggles? <laughs> well, that, gee, you're, you're on Game Notes. I'm kind of asking you. Well, so, appar so apparently there was this hotel in Buffalo that everyone booked their hotel. They then realized that the eclipse was coming in, and then they canceled everyone's everyone's reservations and then reopened it up because they realized that they because the eclipse came through buffalo they realized that they could like triple charge their hotel rooms so it is kind it does kind of seem like a money grab everyone's traveling i don't know if you guys saw that picture that's going viral there was the picture it's like everyone on the airplane raise your hand if you're traveling to cleveland for the for the <laughs> eclipse what's with and, all these like mid towns getting all the <laughs> It's like, crazy. I feel like, yeah, like Buffalo yeah, like, and Cleveland. And like, what do you mean it's traveling through Buffalo? Like, you're, is it on a areas train? That you could see it completely based on where they are on the map. And so I guess some of the cities are just mid ass towns. I, I do know Yoshi's acting bizarre today. So maybe there's something to do with the solar system and oh, the yeah. eclipse. I don't really know. Well, those are like those some of the instincts. girls I date where they're all into like the like horoscopes Yoshi? and stuff. No, I'm. <laughs> 
No, I'm saying as the the horoscope in a sense of like wherever the sun and the moon is aligned, they, they, it affects your moods and all that. Ra, are you a big horoscope guy? Not, no, I might as well believe in the. I could see Ra busting out the tarot cards no, on a date. No, it's, it's such crazy. Like, hey, you know, whatever floats your boat. If it works for you, great. But he'll be busting out anything, anything on that. It's real. Miss <laughs> fucking it, Cleo. He hasn't busted anything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's Plus, like, true. Hey, you're like Tiger. You got the heavy. You and Tiger have the yeah. heaviest sacks in the league. I uh, gotta be a one, fucking one, one, one by Park choice. The Perkins waitress. Fuck one of these days. Yeah, some states are like calling it states of emergency and shit. It's like it's a fucking eclipse. These things have happened various times in various ways. Like, well, not if you're driving and all of a sudden it's in your in your sight line. You're like ah. Well, no. Ra tweeted be driving Jesus like fucking wit. Christ. Ra tweeted Jesus fucking Christ. Upset that there's been states that have called it like a state emergency or some. But Ra, with thousands and thousands of people traveling into these states, do you not understand the states possibly changing something? It's not about the eclipse. The states they're doing it because of all the travelers coming. I, and in. I and I heard Nashville is one of those places. Ra and much like Yoshi going crazy, it's probably my Morgan Wallen threw a chair off the roof at a bar oh, six geez. floors up. Fuck. I idiot. think everybody's going a little bit fucking crazy. I mean, the Rangers and fucking Devils went crazy. <laughs> everybody's going cuckoo. I don't know where to fucking go from there, Biz. Holy shit. But now, uh, I don't, basically, real quick, was the state of emergency. I, no, it never happened before. There's no need for it. I read the whole article. It's just, it just overblown like the rest of the shit. Talked about boxing, Biz. Perfect segue. We had the awesome Devils Rangers the other night. Two seconds in. Just unreal. Rempe stepped up at McDermott. That was one great fight. There were four other ones going on. Jimmy Feezy and Curtis Lazar was actually the first glove drop. I didn't know that fucking that secondary rule that they threw eight guys out two seconds of the game. Thought that was bullshit. Biz, hockey is back. Has integrity returned to the NHL, Biz? So, I mean, first of all, awesome. Like, it took over the internet. Everybody outside of hockey was talking about it. Now, I want to say, is this something that I want to see, you know, every other game or every other week? Absolutely not. Every few years, in an organic matter, to me, I fucking love it, and it's an endorsement for hockey. We're the only Wait, professionals... Biz. If you had seven of those a year, you wouldn't like it off the opening draw. I uh, and I, not, that's aggressive. That's an aggressive number, but to say you wouldn't want to see it, I, I would be okay with one or two a year. I guess. Okay. okay what I'm saying okay. is like you know, yeah. I, I I try to kind of lean in the middle in a sense of like I understand that people who watch and enjoy hockey don't all think like me. I love the fact that the organic fighting is back, and it just seems like there's a revival of the heavyweight division. Now, to go back to maybe people who are being ultra-negative about it online, saying that there's no place, and um, I, I know that Jen Botterill up in Canada had some very strong words about it. I have so much respect for her. I love working on the panel with her. She said that there's uh, far more impressive things that are happening in hockey right now that I'd rather sh shed light on than talk about these guys being idiots on the ice. Now, to give it context, this just didn't happen because like guys felt like brawling off the fucking start here. This happened because going back to the Rempe elbow to Siegenthaler. And I think if you go back to that, he didn't answer the bell in that game. And that's a game in which Curtis McDermott was a part of it. Remember when even before that they went and they went and got him, right? They went they went and traded for him, right? And then he said in the post game comments after that game how it's bullshit and that he lost respect for Rent Bay. And if you want to have integrity in the game, you need to answer the bell for when you throw cheap shots like that. Now, fast forward. Everybody knew this fucking matchup was coming. Everybody more than likely knew that these guys were going to have to go at it and Rent Bay was going to have to answer the bell for McDermott. I don't know if you saw the video, boys, of Rent Bay on the bench before the game. He had the oh, fucking yeah. headphones he on. He was, the, he was doing the yeah. boxing. He had Eminem on, Mom Spaghetti, da, 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 you know, whatever the he fucking didn't, He didn't come before the game. He had the heaviest sack in NYC going into that one. MSG, they had to fucking bring it in in a wheelbarrow just like on South Park. That's how fucking heavy his sack was. Now, I would have been nervous going into a fight against McDermott. It seemed like he fully embraced this. He was like shadow boxing. He was up for it. And I think as a result of, of when they ended up lining up, I think that was just a sign of the Rangers saying is like, well, fuck your post-game comments from whenever back when. We're going to not only fucking, you know, not only is Rempe going to answer the bell, but the whole team is. And then obviously New Jersey not being happy with the way that Sie Siegenthaler got hit. Boom, the melee ensues. Now, 
I do think that maybe they should look at that rule because I think it puts guys a little bit in jeopardy at the fact that if you throw four guys out a squad, guys are going to get tired towards the end of the game. And there also might be other fights going on in which there was. Like there was one, I think, a few whistles later. So overall, incredible viral moment for the NHL, an organic fight that ended up happening. And once again, I don't need to see this every month, but once every year, once every couple of years, fucking rights, man. I think it's what makes our game great. What, what do you think? A couple things uh, responding to you. The league would never look to change that rule because if anything, that would make sure that this doesn't happen more often, right? They're going to be kicking sure. all those guys out. So I understand that that won't get changed. I, I, I do agree with you, though. Second thing is about the Rempy nerves. And you would know a lot better than me. While he seemed cool and calm and relaxed, he could have been very nervous inside. He was doing a great job showing maybe a different side and and a different vibe, but there was no way McDermott's a heavy. He is a a tough motherfucker. And not that Rempe's afraid of anyone, but the lead up to it is what you and many other former tough guys mentioned with anxiety and the toughest part of all this. So there had to be some nerves, but he was approaching it unreal. The brawl itself was incredible. Now, I have to thank TNT for the Chickens Altcast. I got to thank them for hiring you and building your brand and, and therefore our brand. But maybe the worst camera job in the history of a brawl, and I got to say it, I'm a man of honesty, and you have to say it, they just were focusing in on one fight where I think it would have been pretty simple just to back that thing up and we could have seen the whole ice. Now, it's it's hard to say, and it's really Monday morning quarterbacking here. But th- as I was watching, I'm like, no, where are the other? They're all fighting, and I can't see them. Show me everything. Show me what's happening. And I guess good good for Marino that it wasn't shown right away. Because <laughs> and 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 I want to give credit to everyone, yeah, all everyone. Of them. All but of them. but but more than more than anyone, Marino, right? Like Keandre Miller's enormous, dude. He he probably was giving up 30, 40 pounds there. And, and, and height to boot. And he went in there and he went to him. And then you saw Keandre Millen do, doing the too small. Short well, guy. Well, Marino showed up. And then we had the uh, VZ and Lazar tilt. That was the first one. And the, the funniest clip is when it originally the puck drops, Lazar grabs v, VC, Rempe and McDermott square off. Then <laughs> you see Goudreau sprint for ball. So they're going, and then Tierney kind of comes out of the center ice, and he goes, oh, fuck off. And then he just sees Truba coming. He drops it with Truba. So shout out to all those guys. It takes a big old set of balls to do that. And I think some of these guys were out of their weight class, but they all stood up for their team. And and also for Jersey, who's been out of it for a while. They, they I mean, dude, they could easily have not wanted to be a part of that. Like, McDermott was, but everyone else didn't have to be, and that's a team that shows they care about each other. And then the Rangers, the year of the New York Rangers. Will this continue into June? Nobody knows. No. But everything is coming up Rangers, and that's a team forever. They were too soft. They were too scared. The 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 response they had to Tom Wilson, to Panera in that time, like the little crybabies, everyone was making fun of the Rangers. They have changed their ways, and rempy has been a big part of it. truba has been a big part of it. It's a, it's a team that is so well-connected and gelled right now. I think now. galvanized is the word you were looking for. Galvanized. Great job. That's one of your words. Nice job, Biz. Galvanized unit that is just – they they're not just peaking at the right time. They're peaking all goddamn season. So an awesome moment, and for people who hate it, I don't hate somebody who hates that. Like, whatever, that's your opinion. I'm just telling you that you're in the enormous minority of hockey fans who didn't get a kick out of watching that go down. That is entertainment. That is people standing up going bananas, and you can hate it, but you can't scream to the people out there that love it and tell them, you're an idiot for loving this. Why do you love this? I don't know, man, because it's guys trying to kill each other, and sorry that that's entertaining, but that's the truth. Well, hey, and that's part of the entertainment too. The people that don't like it voice in their opinion. It just creates more of the conversation, right? And going back to the Rempe, like you talked about the nerves leading up to it. I don't know if he consulted anyone on on like how to approach it, but he just wore it perfectly. He embraced the moment. He did pre-fight. They had the video of that. I thought he fucking carried himself well in the fight. I would probably yeah, give the win. I, th- I would give the win to McDermott because those fucking rights, 
the way that he punches the holding arm of the other guy and then follows it up with another couple rights, I would, oh my God, imagine watching him and Revo go. Like, I think McDermott and Revo is is the fight that I would pay to watch right now. I know that Wi-Fi wasn't in that game the other night. Uh, when, when Revo was running around with no oh Wi-Fi. Oh God, was causing he, a ruckus. Oh. Right. Well, is that Pezzetta? Is it Pezzetta on the Canadians who fought him? That's not his weight class, is it? No, he would probably be a light heavyweight. Uh, that would have been more my matchup. Okay. I would have considered okay. myself a light heavyweight, not a tough one at that. I guess that's just my category based on weight and size. Um, but uh, you you touched on it, though, Wit Man, it's the entertainment industry. And if you look at UFC's numbers and where that's heading – I just think this type of thing is it, it makes the casual fan more interested in hockey, and that's why I'm personally all for it. Did you get that Instagram video I said a little bit? I don't know if, it's, if he's a comedian or not, but the black guy talking about Red Pain explain it in detail. Like that's that's a huge effect. Like he said, this all goes to this kid, and like that just shows, I guess, the reach of, of hockey now. I mean, people fucking love fighting, dude. It was a hilarious video. We should tweet it out from the account, man. It was and stuff. my last thing, um, two things is. Didn't really understand why LaViolette was so mad at Travis Green. It was kind of confusing, and I think Green was even like, I, I, I don't know what you're so mad. He's, he's like, it's your guys who was asking for the line brawl. Well, well, the visiting team gives their lineup for us, so he started McDermott. Maybe that's what LaViolette was so upset about. But I think even after LaViolette had said, oh, I, 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 the emotions kind of got the best of me, whatever. The other thing, McDermott after, after really chirping Rempe, um, after the, the, the no fight with the Siegenthaler elbow, he said, I got a lot of respect for this kid. He's coming to the league. He's trying to make a name, and I will have respect for him uh, moving forward. So that was kind of cool to see it wrap up. And, and that's kind of what happened. That's the funniest thing about all the people pissed off. This is until stuff like this goes on. And I'm not talking the line brawl, but McDermott and Rempe fighting. It lives on and on and on. And then you might get dirty plays and cheap shots. Well, now it's over. It ended. It's it's like a it's like a bully at school. Like the fight happens and it's over. That's it. So we'll see what happens next year with these guys. But the Rangers are they a team of destiny? That is the question. <sighs> Ra sent over an Instagram of um basically it's a fraud list or a non fraud list. It's teams with the best record against losing teams and teams with the best record against winning teams. The Rangers are number one on the fraud list. So Ra might have been put, <laughs> putting some. Uh, R.A. hates the Rangers, that too. List. R.A. hates the Rangers. I was loving the list. He's quiet on here, but he despises I, the Rangers. I didn't, I didn't even notice that, Wit. <laughs> well, the, the guy actually says, he, he said, I, this, this isn't a conclusion you could draw from this. I got to dig into the numbers more. I don't, I don't think he was he calling said, the Rangers He said frauds. there's no correlation to, to the quote-unquote being frauds by beating the worst teams during the regular season that translates into playoff uh, a success or not success. So, Long story short, is it just proved that the way, the reason as to why the Rangers are going to win the President's Trophy is because they beat all the bottom feeders all year long, the most okay. of any other team. So, listen, I'm two for two, back-to-back -back years now, picking a team to miss playoffs, and then they go on to win the President's Trophy. <laughs> Hopefully that's not a curse for you Rangers fans because you're three points ahead with four games right now ahead of Dallas. But, hey, congrats on a regular season, but I don't know if that's something that you want going into the postseason. All right. Um, I believe January, February-ish, you said you were not afraid of the Rangers in the least bit for the Bruins. Do you want to address that again, or is that still the same feeling? Um, There's got to be a well, little I, I don't, fear well, in I, there. If, I haven't really thought of them playing because uh, they probably won't meet until the conference final, so... Um, I don't. I wouldn't say my opinions changed, but I will say this: I'm scared shitless of Tampa Bay. I don't want the Bruins to play Tampa, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's in a round. heater too. Do now, not want that. Wait, what? What would now be? Because I don't think. I think we laid the Penguins to rest six times this season. I, were, I read the eulogy, dude. <laughs> they were ten points out of it not too long ago, and then the heater that they've been on has now propelled them into at least the hunt, right? Because it just interchanges every second of every day at this point. Who would be your ideal first round matchups and who would be your ideal matchup for the Rangers at this point? Because I now lean towards redemption for the Pittsburgh Penguins when they had the spicy pork and broccoli guy in net, their third string goalie who couldn't really mix in a glove save where that was the Penguins series. They were up 3-1. They should have closed that fucker out, but now they got good goaltending. 
And then Delkovich is not even playing that bad. He's actually buzzing. He's, and he's he could playing be a unbelievable. Very streaky goalie. And he's on a heater right now. So who would be your ideal first round matchup against the Rangers? Like saying if I'm a Rangers fan or just for as a fan no, of the No, if league. you want to see him go down like me and R.A. Yeah, see, I don't want to see the Rangers go down. Um, if if I were the Rangers, who would I least want to play? Pro probably Pit probably Pittsburgh, just the Crosby effect, dude. Like there's something going on with this guy, and and shame on me. Shame on me for how stupid it's like what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. I'm the guy who bet that Crosby would never get 50 goals. I lost. I'm the guy who said the Pittsburgh Penguins organization was dead. They're not dead. When are you going to learn your lesson, Ryan? When are you going to understand that this is not a human being we're talking about? Sidney Crosby, is he's, he's outer-worldly. Is that a word? Is that a yeah, two-word? It, it is now. No, no, it, it is now. I just other, created it. No, Make a t-shirt. Outer-worldly world, Sid. I can't even say it correctly. But this guy... When you talk about Matthews and McDavid and McKinnon, buddy, these guys are incredible generational talents. They don't hold a fucking candle to Sidney Crosby. And they haven't been around as long as him. And, and who knows if they'll ever somewhat catch what he's done. It's never-ending madness. He doesn't stop proving people wrong. I don't. He's carrying this team into the playoffs. Before you came on, Biz, I said if they get in the playoffs, he has to be up for MVP. Now, yeah. who gets screwed? Who gets screwed? A guy who's going to be the fourth person ever to get 100 assists in a season, Connor McDavid. A guy like Nathan McKinnon, who's been just a bull all season long. A guy, Kucherov, who actually probably should be MVP right now, who well, nobody's I, giving enough respect to. You, you but would... Crosby, he's dragging this team. On his shoulders, Biz. Non-stop. Saturday against the Lightning. That guy was out of control. He had a fucking tip it between his legs off the crossbar. Yeah. He scored the first goal of the game. Um, Drew O'Connor got run over by some defense. I don't even remember the name of. Sid went in and ran that D-man over. It's just he never disappoints. And I'm the guy picking against him all the time. What the you know what fuck I knew, is wrong you know what I knew that You know what I knew they had something special? When Malkin had his folks in town. Remember the last time they were on the Jumbotron and in the mix? It was when he was fucking destroying Carolina in that one cup run where he literally put the team on his back just like Sid does all the time. So the fact that they were in the house, Malkin's getting back to his old school game. He had a, I, I would say over the last couple of years, like I don't want to say looked like a shell of himself, but there were a lot of hope plays, a lot of turnovers, maybe not the same magic that we once saw from a high, high uh, percentage aspect. But he looks like himself now. And what right going back to when they were interviewed and shoved a microphone in Crosby's face when they were having their ultimate struggles and then they get rid of his buddy Gensel, he was disgusted. Because I think that he felt that maybe some people in the organization were essentially giving up on the season. Do I understand Dubas's approach and having to look towards the future and maybe not aligning on a contract dollar with Gensel? But buddy, getting bunting in return and what he's brought to their lineup. Like, he's almost at a point per game since being there, and he's been fucking... He looks like fuck the guy who was playing in Toronto. I know he didn't do well with the man-on-man -man in Carolina, but he's been a huge boost. So between those guys, the goaltending, and them kind of figuring out last minute here, what a push by the Penguins. And going back to your MVP conversation, Wit, if you were to squeak him, and, and oh, Tampa fans are going to kill me. No, if, no, no. If you drop... <laughs> bud, you bud. No, 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 no. The reason I say that is I want to say he's only like plus five and he's done so much damage on the power play compared to the rest of the guys. That to me would be maybe a reason to pull him off. As opposed, you said it, McDavid, he has to be on the ballot, right? He's going he's gonna to be the fourth player all time to hit 100 assists in a season. And people might say Kucherov's been doing it all year and McDavid slow, were slow coming out of the gate to the point where they had to fire their fucking coach. But I don't think that you keep McDavid off the ballot. You ain't taking McKinnon off the ballot because I think McKinnon's the fucking MVP. So if you want to slide <laughs> Crosby on, you have to take Kuch off. And I know people are saying, he's 50 fucking points ahead of the next guy on his team. What do you mean? That is literally the definition of the MVP. 
But going back to Pasha's comments, if we were to give the power play merchant label to somebody, it would be Nikita Kucherov. Fair? Fair? If you have that many points with and you're only around, I think he's like a plus five or plus eight, compared to the rest of these guys and the damage that they're able to do five on five, five on five, it's the hardest to score. That has to be a strong argument as to why you're putting your guy in the top three. And I'm not need- trying to work against Kucherov here. I'm just saying, what are the others providing that he's not? And it goes back already to the full conversation of you could have this fucking argument about every goddamn league award right now. Who do you got winning the Jack Adams? Is Nogblock going to be a consideration? What's his winning percentage since coming in and turning that team around? The best in the league. What about if Washington makes it? Carberry, he's fucking, it's like a half a, half a team of toddlers. With, with at, 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 I think going back to about 10 to 15 games ago, before Ovi started going on that rip, they had 120 goal score. 120 goal score. So Carberry has to be a consideration. I think that Philly's not going to make playoffs, and therefore Torts is not going to be in the Jack Adams race. Go out, look at what Talk's done with the turnaround. Who do you have winning the Norris? I think probably from a Canadian bias perspective and a full body of work, you probably have Quinn Hughes. I think most people, but look at what fucking, you got Kale McCarr. Any GM, if they had first overall pick, if they're taking a defenseman, is taking Kale McCarr. So he's right there for the Norris. What Roman Yossi can't be ignored. I mean, it, you can go on and on and on for league awards, and I don't think that we, we go back to the fighting and the fact that this is the entertainment industry. You could compare it to any other season from a caliber of play, amount of players hitting 50 goals, amount of players that are going to hit 100 points. The storylines off the ice, it all got kicked off with Babcock. Then we had the Ottawa Senators sale with the Pinto Parlay. All the shenanigans that have been at Tortorella. The shit show in Chicago. We don't need to go into details on that. The list goes on. How about the world premiere games with William Nylander over there? Him tarps off with Madison Beers. Every week you could have named something that was happening off the ice whether it was somewhat related to hockey or not related to hockey at all, where there was an insane storyline. So I just think from a full season perspective, I'm looking back and saying, I don't know when I've ever been this engaged from an on ice perspective, but then also been treated with all this shit show of what's been happening off the ice. So when I say, has this been the most entertaining regular season of all time? Yeah, maybe recency bias plays in. And maybe because I'm so invested into the media game, I'm paying even more attention to it. But this season has made my job so fucking easy. Bravo to the NHL and its players and its off-ice antics. Move over, NBA, because this fucking league. I probably missed 10 other things that happen off the ice when listing things off. Gee, do you want to chime in? Wit, do you want to chime in? What other I crazy mean, P- shit? Patty Roy coming back to the NHL. Patty Patrick Waugh coming back. Patrick fucking Roy. Like- how about Chelios' jersey retirement with Showtime giving me the Showtime overtime winner? Boom, All-star there's another game, one for you. All-star game in Toronto. All-star like, game in Toronto. Bieber in the mix. Tate McRae, give it to me. I mean, First that's got to be that's got to be at the bottom. Like we're talking All-star game I know game it's for at the bottom, season. but I know but, it's at the bottom with but how often are we shitting on All-star games? How tell me a more entertaining All-star game in the last 10 to 15 years. That was it. First ever OT uh, game winning goal with an empty netter too. We got that. That's that's what wild the shit. But the center has been single. Already that's, been single. Season. <laughs> that's the biggest off 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 ice storyline going I'm, in. I'm, I'm in the transfer portal. <laughs> 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 Getting rejected left and right. But no, no, I, got, no nil deals yet though. Oh uh, yeah, they're, they're rolling in. All right, before we go any further, here's a few words from my good friends over at Game Time. Did you know that you get tickets? to the Red Sox Orioles for what, $12 right now? Are you kidding me? That's because game time has it all. The official ticket of pot or Boston Sports. You should never have to worry when you're buying tickets for your next big event. That's why game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all the sports, music, comedy, theater, any good events near you. They have flash deals for sudden discounts, zone deals for when you're feeling flexible, and the lowest price guarantee means that if you find the same seats for less anywhere else, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game Time is the best place for last-minute seats with up to 60% off your favorite events. 
and whether you're not a baseball fan or whatever, you got Metallica coming this summer, the Rolling Stones, there's some cheap tickets out there as well. All kinds of concerts in this area summertime. Get on it. Game time. What are you waiting for? I might just buy these Orioles Sox tickets right now because they're so damn cheap. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Chicklets for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. The Senators, the, the most entertaining empty net team in the league, regardless of who whose net is empty. <laughs> they had really great like, slap shot into the empty net. Pure chaos versus Toronto. Then the other day, Nico Hesha lets it roll into that Brady fucking snap show could chuck. I mean, that is an unwritten rule, right, guys? You don't fucking oh. put it after the buzzer, right? Go ahead, Wit. Minutes. I'll let you take this one. I've been talking, taking a lot of oxygen here. So <laughs> I have vivid remem- memories of being a little kid. And my dad would be playing goalie in street hockey, okay? And say, um, my buddy would score. I remember one time my neighbor, he scored. And then it bounces out. And then I just banged it in again. And my dad went ballistic. Like, ballistic. He went nuts on me. And I was like, what's the problem? It already went in. He's like, you don't put it in the net again. And so I was always kind of like weary or wary of of things like that happening. So when, when he sure did that, I was like, oh, and then you see Brady Kachuk oh, yeah. skating down the ice <laughs> like a fucking madman. And he's so, it, it's almost like he grew up with Keith probably telling him, oh, like, yeah. that is, because so, his face, he's like, what the fuck you doing? He was confused. He was angered. He couldn't believe it. And and he's just like, what the fuck happened? But, but with, with how Toronto responded to R- Ridley Gregg doing that, it, it it is a little double like it is like oh guys you buried one in the empty netter one way and now you're flipping out that somebody does it after the whistle now granted it's completely different circumstances but both are kind of unwritten rules just seeing Brady Kachuk flip out like that there was also a game this week Brady Kachuk had 16 hits yeah. I don't know if you guys N- saw NHL that NHL record no record 17 somebody tweeted out Chara. Oh, I th- so, I saw a bunch of uh, of stuff online since it's been starting started being recorded that it was Brady. But okay, shout out to maybe Chara. post cap or something like that. But okay. sixteen hits. But 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 with the season Ottawa's had, and then Kachuk seeing that like the game's over, we lose, and j- his face skating down the ice. I rewound it ten times. He was so pissed off. It was just funny that Ottawa finds themselves in the middle of another empty net goal drama. Um, cracked me up. And back to the league, I do want to quickly mention, like, I'm an Oilers fan. I'm an Oilers guy. And, and it was very, very scary to, to watch that Dallas game. We can talk about Dallas in a minute because oh, we yeah, need to. Get a big but I, I need to talk and, and, and tell everyone that doesn't appreciate what McDavid is about to do and ha- help all of you understand, we are watching one of the greatest things that's ever happened in hockey. Is that an exaggeration? No, no, guys, guys, a hundred assists, as we already mentioned, Bobby Orr, Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, that- this is, this is hockey royalty. This is going to be the fourth player ever. He's joining the three greatest players in the history of the NHL. And, and, and yes, 60 goals is amazing. And, and if Matthew's got 70 goals, that's unreal. There's eight guys who've got 70 goals. Two of them aren't even in the Hall of Fame. Mogilny should be. Bernie Nichols is the other one. This is not 100 assists. Even if Matthews got 70 goals, I, 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 maybe I'm crazy. I think 100 assists, guys, is that ridiculous. I mean, Crosby never did it. Like all, Joe Thornton had 96 one year. That was close. But to be the fourth player and have those three be the other three, I mean... And, and I think it's because McDavid does so many things that make us just kind of shrug and, and be like, I can't believe it, that it's not getting enough talk. It's not getting enough consideration for one of the greatest things we've seen in years and years. Gretzky did it 11 years in a row, okay? That's, that, that's, that's, that's obscene. Uh, the other thing is, so he, uh, it's Gretzky, 11 years in a row. But Lemieux and Orr, they only did it one time. Yeah. Like, like Connor McDavid doing this, it needs to be talked about more. I'm hoping when he does it this week that it gets maybe a little bit it's more. It's gonna happen publicity. on TNT against Vegas, their potential first round matchup. They got the game Wednesday. They don't play till then. So it's yeah, it's it's remarkable wit. Now, I guess like a little bit of pushback. 
you 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 think that a hundred assists is more oppressive than seventy goals? Yes, yes. Okay. And in this in this, well, I'm saying in this day and age in this game, which would be the same if Matthews got it. But and I think people's pushback would be you get a second assist and there's just one goal score. It's just the names, though, Biz. It's like to yeah. join those three names, it, it just creates something different for me. Like, those are the three guys, dude. You think of the history of hockey, and you think of those three names, and nobody else is with them. And, and 70 goals, yes, but as I mentioned, the name's on there. Also, when, when Orr did it in 70, and then it was um, Gretzky 11, and then I think Mario was 88 or 89, there was a lot more goals then, dude. The yeah. average goals per game now is a little over six. Then it was seven and a half. So it, it's even more special to me. And if it wasn't just those three names. That's why the goal scoring to me is more impressive now, just because of the advancement of how good goaltenders are. But I think it's a very healthy argument. But wait, what you're saying, though, too, is is like most of the time when these guys, for instance, like Bernie Nichols scored 70 goals, he was playing with Wayne Gretzky. You need somebody special finding its way around guys and find those lanes and essentially feeding his players to make them better. And that's the level in which Connor McDavid at is at. And since we, we, we went past Sid and we're talking about all this greatness and, and these names, these great names keep popping up um, in the midst of Sid on this point streak at the end of the season, he's going to be over a point a game for the 19th time in his career. And that is only one less year than Wayne Gretzky. Who's at 20 and he just passed Gordy Howe, who was at 18. So these, these names that these guys are, are in company with just tells you how special they are and what they're doing at this current moment. And along with these storylines of this season, R.A., that's to me why this year is, is just standing out the most. Because we're having the argument about what's more special, 70 goals or 100 assists. They're both more than likely going to happen this year. I hope Matthews gets. Oh, seven. I, it, how many games do they have left? Five. I don't. He's going to have to go on a, a little bit more of a heater. I think that he's going to try to do it. Now, uh, the other things that we didn't mention too is the amount of of teams that were in the Presidents Trophy race as well, and just how tight that parity is. So not only do we have a wild card race, we had this Presidents Trophy race towards the end of the season. Now, I know we're going to shift over to Dallas. And there have oh been a lot God, of Dallas fans barking online about we haven't given them the flowers that they deserve. I believe we touched on them like three, four pods ago. But once again, they just look like a well-oiled machine. To me, they're the top team in the West. Were you done talking? And Ari, we didn't really get your pushback on your vague tweet to me. Call me a, what, a Zoomer? What'd vague you call me tweet? A- I, don't, I don't do vague tweets. I'm never ambiguous on Twitter. <laughs> I'm joking, guy. I'm being sarcastic. Oh, okay, okay. No, now, but... Now, when you called me a Zoomer, did you have another season in mind before it, we move on here? It had not. It had nothing to do with the season. It was just the, like the hyperbolic, like uh, the, all the Boston headlines. It was like just goof. The, everything's the greatest thing ever nowadays. Like today, WrestleMania, the best WrestleMania ever. It was more goofing on that. You just sounded like a, like a young kid, buddy. I no one toots the NHL's horn than me. I say every time the league has got the best talent ever. I love the league. I don't, but I thought about it. I don't have like a regular season that jumps out, Paul, because I think it's all about the playoffs. People remember who, who wins the playoffs, wins the championship. So I don't have like I was think like one. Oh, that regular season was great because I don't. Know, I think they get forgotten a little bit, and then the dust bit of history because well, I won't be. For, I won't champions. be forgetting this one. I won't um, be forgetting no, this one. Definitely not. No, you Double won't it. unless unless we get lucky with the playoffs. The only I was actually looking into this to try to find some other amazing ones. The two I saw, um, ninety two, ninety three. Okay, yep. so we had a couple new teams came in. It was Eric Lindros's rookie year. Timu shooting the glove. Mogilny got over seventy. Uh, but ma- mainly, the incredible parts of that season were the playoffs, as Ra said. Uh, the other one was um, 0506. Crosby and Ovechkin come to the NHL. The lockout was over. New rules. The NHL became a faster game. So uh, that year, Thornton got traded mid-season. Won the MVP only. Only athlete in the four major sports to ever do that. So I think there's been some other ones that have been great. But Ari, you said it perfect. It's about the playoffs. So this year, I'm with you, Biz. It is the most entertaining regular season of all time. Uh, if I can get to Dallas for a minute, guys. Oh, man. Dallas fans Dallas fans have to understand, like while having a great team, you're going to be way more in the mix now. You don't have – like the fan base, it's not enormous. It's not saying it's not a great fan base. It is, but it's not enormous. So it's hard for us a lot of times 
to go in huge into this team over and over who've consistently been really good when there aren't that like it's easier to talk about teams with bigger fan bases that are louder on the internet i know that sounds crazy well dude that's the business we're in sorry to say it like that's kind of how it goes none of us have ever thought for this season dallas isn't a stanley cup contender they are the best team in the nhl i'm not saying it because they just wax the oilers i watched them buddy their third line third line in quotations is ben stankoven and wyatt johnson <laughs> like they don't yeah, have a have bad two, line. You have you have uh, the drafting of this team and the 2017 draft will live on forever. It set up their core, buddy. They 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 had 2021 20, draft. They got Johnson and Stankoven, and they traded down. They had the 15th pick, and they traded it a little farther back to get to get Wyatt Johnson because they knew how good he he was. He didn't even play hockey that year. The OHL didn't play. Then you get the second rounder. They got Harley in the draft. They got Rupe Hints in an earlier draft years prior. It, it's it's just been all drafting and development, which is Essa Lindell's a draft pick. It's just like you can't do it any other way now, and they've done it masterfully. And now you watch the team play. Dude, they come at you in waves. They got big D. They got puck moving D. Ottinger was a little bit of an issue. Well, not he's anymore. Figured he's figured it out. He's on fire. And then what, like, what line can't score? Their fourth line, Fasca, he's a draft pick, right? He was a first rounder, so never really lived up to kind of that pedigree, but he's a great fourth liner. And so, like, I don't, I don't, if I don't see many teams who could, who could beat them. They're, if Ottinger plays well, I think they're going to win the cup. I, I, I just don't see, or, and, and injuries is an enormous impact to any team, but they are so deep and they play their dick off, and DeBoer's a good coach, and they Unreal. game plan for other teams. So, yeah, Dallas Stars fans, you have a right to be a little upset, but what what are you even going to care when you guys truck through everyone and raise Jesus. Lord Stanley's? Great break. A little round of applause for Whitney. What a breakdown. Ow. And Holy shit. How about a little Duchesne? meat on the bone, buddy. Jesus How about Christ. Duchesne, though? I know. Duch incredible pickup. I was just going to say, like, this year the biggest thing that stood out, especially early on, is the fact that they basically have two first lines. Like, their scoring capability on lines one and two, if you rank them against all the top lines in the league, it tells you they have two first lines. I think they had and, three. Well, yeah. Now, now that they got Stan Coven putting out the production that he's putting out since being called up, and, and you also touched on it, with the fact that a lot of these people were homegrown, there's not a lot of movement. They understand Dallas Stars hockey. They come into the organization, they learn the ways, and then, they, boom. All, the only move they had to make at the deadline is get to Tanev. Right. Well, guess and what, Biz? Talking what? about drafting. Hit me with it. So when they took Johnson first round, 2021. Yep. And then they took um, Stankoven second round. Yep. You know who they had two picks in a row in the second round. Okay. You know who they took right after him? Artem Grushnikov, who they then traded for Chris Tanev. So it's all drafting, dude. Like, that was the guy Calgary wanted back. Have you heard the backstory? Now, this could be completely made up. I was talking to somebody, so I didn't. Uh, I should have fact-checked it. Now, I believe the scouting staff for Dallas was used to be with Detroit, and that at a certain point when, like, contract negotiations came out, maybe they didn't get what they felt that they deserved based on how they helped them draft. And then Jim Nill scooped them up. And these guys are the best drafters known to man. Because look at their fucking look at the look at the look at the evidence. So the fact that they weren't paid enough and ended up moving on and then going to fucking flourish in another organization, it just tells you with the way the NHL works now in a cap system, you need to be fucking drafting and developing pr properly because you need guys like Stankoven, like Harley, like all, like Ottinger, and all these guys coming up who aren't making necessarily big dough at least yet contributing tugging the rope come playoff time so it's a well-oiled machine i would for sure if i had gun to the head if you said pick one team i would put pick dallas to win the stanley cup at this point they look like they're flawless and what's the other component going into playoffs that you need nowadays seeing it from florida and vegas you need toughness well fuck buddy you don't think jamie ben's got that old man strength you don't think there's guys in that lineup willing to shimmy shake the gloves off and fucking go knuckle sandwich on you and the depth you look at their fifth line who won't even be playing come playoff time, I would say most 
half the teams in the league would pray to have them as their third line. So they are just a, a wagon. And, eight, uh, eight 20 goal scores, 230 goal scores. They'll probably end up getting one or two more of those. And, um, yeah, they, they, dude, they are going to be a serious problem. And for my Oilers, like, they don't match up well against them. They don't. And, and that's like, I don't see anyone who matches up well. Well, they're not going to play them first round. You know, know who might, though? The Vegas Golden Knights. That would be just as electric as watching the Golden Knights and the Edmonton Oilers. So if you're an Oilers fan, you're just hoping that they take a little bit of wind out of their sails if that's the case. Yeah, Dallas, 10 guys in double digit, 10 forwards are actually in double digit goals. Wyatt Johnson, he hit the 30 goal mark. Since the cap era, there's only been 11 20 year olds who have hit that number Hovechkin, Matthews, Crosby, Pasternak, Monahan, McDavid, Malkin, Line A, Kopitar, Evander Kane, Bergeron, Taves, and Stamkos. That's some pretty lofty company to be in. And also, you know too, what I have- always wonder? Sorry to interrupt because I do have a question for Biz. Maybe you'd know any of you guys. So when Dallas has the 15th pick that year and they're like, all right, we want Wyatt Johnston, how do you know that he'll still be there at 24? Like, are they. I wonder if they're talking to all the other... Like, how do you know? You know what I'm saying? I guess you have a good idea on who the teams bet- behind so, you will take. Yeah, in in that case, I think that they were fortunate, as you mentioned, where he barely played. And he I talked play, to... Uh, a- 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 Anson Carter was the first guy to make me aware of it, where I think he played six or seven games that year because of COVID, where they just liked what they saw and maybe knew some background information that other teams didn't. And, at, and people say, well, there's a lot of other kids who didn't play that year well clearly this guy was flying under the radar for some type of reason and then they were so high on bullish on him and they ended up scooping him up and as you guys have seen with their track record they don't miss much and they didn't with this kid he is a special special player and not another one maverick bork maverick bork i think is leading the ahl in scoring and he's another late first rounder young kid so dallas stars fans you have so much to be happy about, and you're going to probably witness a pretty special run. Now, I might have just killed you. I might have just written your eulogy right there, but I don't even think my mushness can slow this team down. What do you think the glass banger's thinking right now going into playoffs? Do you know, I, the, do you know I, the glass I, banger? I can't, I can't oh, yeah, wait to piss tiff. everyone off. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! What, they got I mean, they're not really losing. Well, Pavelski, obviously, probably a future Hall of Fame, but he's going to be UFA. But Duchesne, Craig Smith, the only two other UFA forwards, Tanev and Hakapar in the back end, and then Wedgwood. So largely, this team is going to be back next year. So I mean, we'll see what happens in this playoffs. They can very well run it back. Bravo, bravo, Jim Nil. Yeah, yeah, he's been doing an unreal job down there. Uh, we want to talk about the Islanders for a second. Uh, you know, our buddy Frankie Borelli, we've had him on the show a bunch. He's Savage Islanders fan, and uh, a week ago, his dad had to get like heart surgery, open heart surgery. You know, it's obviously a very emotional thing to go through. And made a video about it online was was emotional as you would expect. Of course, only Frankie can turn it to like a an Islanders cheerleader video. And that they go out, they win that night, and they got their little swagger back. Right now, they're the uh, third in the Metro. Do they stick their wit? What do you think? The Islanders in the playoffs? I think that that there's a good chance that that third Metro spot could come down to Pittsburgh Islanders last day of the regular season, which would be awesome to get to watch. This team is so confusing. I I, I know we've said it. I thought I thought when Wah came in, it would be an easy run to kind of get them going and get them into the playoffs. They had a little success. Then they completely shit the bed. Now they're back again. So for me to say I understand anything going on there is ridiculous because I don't think it makes any sense what's happened. I know he's called out the goaltending and that they haven't got the goaltending that they thought they would get. And then, R.A., you mentioned at one point, like, going more to Varlamov, right? You didn't understand why they weren't doing that. And then now they have, correct? Yeah. He's played a little shutout the other other night. Two nothing shutout. So it seems 41 saves. Yeah, you got to figure out your goaltending, but one guy that I have noticed that really hasn't slowed down, and I thought he might, I I know him pretty well. We used to train together. There's Paul Mary. Dude, he's had a really good year, and he's always been great defensively, bull in front of the net, but dude, he's having a good go of it right now. Barzell's been good. It's just weird how inconsistent they are. I, I, I'm not looking to play them in the first round, right? But it, having said that, like I think the Rangers would smash the Islanders. Really? Sma- like yeah. Smash them. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. I just, because I, I, I don't think the Islanders can score with the Rangers, and I don't think they can score with a lot of teams. And yes, if, if, if their goaltending goes on an incredible hot run, you never know. 
But I, I they, they don't scare me. I think they're going to end up getting in, and I respect what's happened there, but they do not scare me. They don't. And I said the Predators didn't scare me, and look what they've done lately. And I know somebody who said the Jets I, I, didn't scare I, them, I, I, and look I what would, they've done lately. I would say that for for uh, from a competitive standpoint, I think that Pittsburgh and the Islanders seem like more competent playoff uh, 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 players than maybe the other teams. I don't think Detroit's quite ready. The goaltending, I know Alex Lyon had a, a huge stretch there. He actually played really well the other night in that 3-1 win they had uh, against the Buffalo Sabres. I just look at those two teams as bigger threats than if the Flyers or or Detroit Red Wings get in. That that to me, and, and I agree with you, Red, I think that ultimately the Rangers beat the Islanders, but I mean, if they can fucking get their PK going, which has been brutal for the most part all year, and now that Waz kind of gave the goalies a kick in the ass, take the best guy kicking, and you just never know with the greasy Islanders. They're right back to them greasy selves, winning with a one one nothing, two nothing style hockey. So who knows what happens? Wait, Palmieri has twenty six goals through this year. Twenty six goals, yeah. twenty one assists. So that's a pretty good year. What's he? Thir- oh, I'm forty one. What's he? Thirty three. He is thirty three. He's a ninety one. Yeah, dude. Fuck. Guy's a moose what? too. Hairy ass motherfucker too. <laughs> Just a big old broad shouldered moose. I remember he used to dumbbell bench like a hundred pound dumbbells. I'm like, I was holding the fifties. He was doubling ever, me up. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Lou doesn't make him shave his shoulders or his back. Just his face. <laughs> he has to get his chest waxed like Steve Carell before he killed Bridge. I used to play with my buddy <laughs> Steve Clarkson. <laughs> I used to play with. The, remember Stephen Dixon? Yeah, I think I've talked about this on the pod. He was a hairy motherfucker too, and he, you know, he liked this fashion. He liked to look good when he was going out. He used to wear the V-neck, so he used to shave in our sink at the apartment we rented. His V-neck, he would shave. He would clog the sink. We'd have to use the fucking bathtub in order to do anything as far anything water related. So he just like at the bar, he, he wanted the girls to think he was shaved. Like if they got home, they'd see everything else once the everything shirt came else. Up, other he just than wanted the to v- look. Other than the V neck, he would go about an inch inside the V neck the whole way. And he would just, and, and then uh, he evolved though. And then he started just doing the, the, the full nair routine. And it used to stink up the house. Have you ever spelt, smelt the nair when yes. it burns the hair off your body? It's one of the most disgusting smells you could imagine, RA. So any of you hairy bastards out there, maybe stick, maybe maybe hit up the nair instead of having to do the full shave. Like, when did he, uh, Chestia, like, stop being like a, Macho thing for guys. Like, that was always like, oh, a guy to hear your chest. When did that like? Shift? I think it partly I might think it's just coming be back. Because... Oh yeah, for sure, chest hair is coming back. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and it yeah, never back. left. It maybe it never left for most people. I, mean, I think it was Reynolds, more of a, a a heat issue too. These guys are wearing a wool sweater come summertime, so they just wanted to look cool down a little bit. I I I shave my armpits because when I find when it gets too long, it just burns through my deodorant too quick. So I'll like shave it once every two months, and then like right now it's at a normal. Like, would you always looking for ways to save money, bitch? What do you that. mean? Fuck! <laughs> I, I like I meant like as in I get bo faster when I'm not. Oh, sh- I thought I'm you meant shaved. you're just not trying to spend so much money on deodorant. Oh, for fuck's sakes! I can afford deodorant now. That's pretty normal, right? Yeah, that's normal, but I think yeah, it looks a little bad. bit greasy when it gets too long, too. So whatever. Seventies bush. I uh, wait one last. So R A, you don't sh- like now that you're back in the game. Are you going to be shaving your bush, or you just go au natural? Like I could see uh, you having a pubic hairs that go longer uh, than your actual get hammer. The fuck up, bro. No, 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 no. I'll always trim regardless. Fucking okay. doesn't matter. Hey, always, yeah. Just no. The days of big giant bushes. It's kind of hilarious how they fu- we guys had them for so long, but no. Fuck that. Keep it trim. I don't, need, I don't mind. I think widowed. bushes are making a, a comeback, well, too. Like when the girls got like oh. the, the, the hair coming out past their bikini line. No? I think you've mentioned this before. Yeah, you like Kind of gets me you going. Like kind of no. gets me going a little bit. Yeah. No, a little grass on the Anyway, field, we can go back yeah, to we hockey. We definitely can. Well, uh, one last one. Wait, if you're Patrick Watt, who you start in game one of the playoffs if they get in? And that it's, it's a new season. It's, it's like what I said about Connor Brown. Once you got the one, it's like get me to the playoffs. I can change my whole storyline and let me ask you this if if they miss the playoffs do you see lou maybe them parting ways in the offseason i'm sure that's how they'll word it or do you think he's got more juice left in the tank because this is his roster i mean he's, has he been there long enough for you to think that this is his team oh yes if they miss the playoff if they miss the playoffs like you'd have to think about moving on and trying to start over that's an old team dude although 
storylines in the NHL that haven't maybe gotten enough play is shout out Noah Dobson. Oh, because yeah. the guy continues to get so many points and he's really lived up to where he was picked in the draft. Nice player, can move it, has a cannon from the point. At least that's a young guy that they got going. But Barzell's deal, what does he have, one more year? And oh, then no, no, no. He signed. Then he signed. Oh, no. Long... He had the long. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He had the long extension. So, him, they got to get Dobson. And then, other than that, like, they, like I like Brock Nelson. You like some of these older players, but they're old. Older. Seven more years for Barzell. Yeah. I was, I was mistaken on that one. I forgot he had that long deal. Just a bit outside. All right. Before we go any further, here's a word from our friends over at Sport Clips. Hey. Your hair may grow fast, but after going to Sport Clips haircuts, you'll wish it grew even faster because it's quite the time in there. Sport Clips has the best seats in here, and that may or may not be because they happen to be right in front of TVs playing sports all day, every day. And we know that watching sports while getting a haircut sure beats looking at your mug coming off the mirror in front of you. Rather watch ESPN any day, any highlights, whatever. Which is why at Sport Clips every day, it's clippers and curveballs, high tops and Hail Marys. And even waves and wickets, if you're into that kind of thing. At Sport Clips, you can check in with the pros and men's hair and totally check out with pure, uninterrupted relaxation. So head, head on over. You'll watch an endless stream of sports on TV. We'll get an awesome haircut, whether you're getting a feather, a whiffle, whatever. Who cares? Sit there, catch some sports, and get an awesome, sick cut. Sport Clips. It's a game changer. Uh, you guys had an interesting uh, Twitter conversation last week about uh, man-to-man versus zone on defense. And... You know, I'm obviously like I've been watching hockey forever, but I never played it. Was never coached it, so I'm kind of ignorant about a lot of that stuff. But I'm sure other fans are. Like you guys talk about the differences, like yeah. what's better, what are the disadvantages? So, like, you no, know, Wit. I mean, you just basically pointed out, and we asked the question: th- those types of break breakdowns don't happen very often. That's what Carolina fans are saying. So it just so happens what you were watching, and then you saw that between the confusion when Jarvis came down, and it seemed like he was about a stick length away. From uh, uh, you might know the offensive player, Pasta. Pasta, and it seems like he at that point then was engaged, but then backed off. And then Brent Burns had already established his guy, and his guy ended up going to the higher to mid slot area. And given the fact that Jarvis had backed off, it basically gave Pasta a free walking lane right to the net. And a lot of people were like, "Oh, that's Burns's fault. Like you can't just let him walk in there." Like, and I agree. In some cases, you can't be a robot, but if you do come off your check there in man on man, it then just leaves your guy wide open in the slot. So I guess pick your poison. People would say, well, then you have to force him to make a play as opposed to just allowing pasta to walk. But already the discussion comes up in the fact that sometimes when you do play man on man, it can be risky because the minute there is one breakdown, chances are it becomes a high danger scoring chance as opposed to maybe just a, a, a somewhat regular scoring chance, like in that house area, as we saw. So it was an interesting topic. You saw uh, another guy chime in. I'll end up pulling up the tweet. And then uh, the fact that when Tampa won back to back cups, Wit, they had a hybrid man on man in the D zone. And the minute that the player, I believe it was the puck carrier, went above the tops of the circles, the defenseman would not go up any higher than that. He would then retreat and then pass along his so so it's hard man like whether you're playing straight man on man where you see Carolina go all the way out if you're a defenseman all the way if that forward goes out past the blue line that defenseman's following up all the way up top whereas some teams decided ah that's where a lot of messiness happens therefore we're going to adapt to the hybrid much like we just talked about with uh with Coop doing it in Tampa when they won back-to-back cups but wit I know I've been long-winded here you also have to have the personnel in order to play man on man. And some teams just strictly don't have it. That's why they simplify and go to a zone. Yeah, and I actually think Carolina can pull it off. Yes. Hurricanes fans were on me because and so I, I, I should make it clear, they had had five days off or they had come off a long road trip, and all of a sudden it's like, boom, they had a tough period, right? That's kind of what they said. It was one of the worst periods they played this year. My only notice was that that's kind of what happens. And and even though you're man on man, like if they go over that video, it's like, hey, Burns, you just got to drop your guy. He's got like a mini breakaway on the side of the net. It was just a complete fuck up. Their argument, the Hurricanes fans, is that the reason we haven't won the Stanley Cup is because we haven't been able to score. 
Shout out Jake Gensel. I think he has 20 points in 13 games being on the Hurricanes. The scoring doesn't seem to be that much of an issue anymore. And even so, enough where a couple people wrote me, like the Eastern Conference Final last year when they didn't get swept, according to Rod Brendamore, they lost 3-2, 2-1, 1-0, and 4-3. So maybe their defense isn't a problem. It just seems when you play against like super elite players like Pasta, in his mind, he's like, if I can beat one guy, I could have a legit chance of getting a grade-A scoring chance. So... Jarvis kind of made a little bit of a mistake. It was just one clip. I just want to see how it plays out because it just puts so much stress on guys playing defensive zone coverage when it's man on man because, yes, you have to be on your toes at all times, but you kind of know in the back of your mind playing a zone like, all right, like I got to be aggressive on this guy, but if somehow, some way I get beat, boom, I got another layer coming in to help. Whereas there, it's like there's a chance that this guy's going to be all alone and it's going to all be on me. Brendan Moore's a great coach. He knows what his team can and can't handle. He seems to believe they can handle that. And now that they're scoring, maybe it won't be be an issue at all. I just want to see how it plays out. You know, if you if you're playing if you're playing a team with a bunch of skilled forwards, and now you got guys that are beating people one on one, that that a guy like Pasternak can do that. You got to be wary of like leaving your guy and going to help out, even though that's not the system you play. And, and another hard thing, too, Wit, is like you don't know what rules have been established in the locker room, right? So we can online, like, I saw a yeah. lot of people saying, like, oh, that's Bur- Burns has got to drop off his guy and have that guy, where who knows, maybe in the locker room, Brenda Moore saying, no, Jarvis, you're a stick length away. You came down as the strong side forward there. Like, that's your guy. So the minute that he ended up retreating, it's like Burns is already locked in with his guy who is closest to him. So. I, I could see the blame being snapped around, but it ultimately it comes down to, and I had, I had plenty of uh, t- uh, conversations with talk about this too, is you get in the coach's room and you, you try to make it a, as black and white as possible to your players what this in each situation what they're doing. That's what the whole regular season is for, is to figure out all those kinks along the way to where, like I just talked about, where – Maybe they did do a man-on-man in Tampa, and then they figured out, ah, you know what? The minute that they end up cycling up past the the tops of the circles, our defensemen are having a hard time, so let's just implement this hybrid where now that's our rule on how we play D-zone. So I don't know what the conversations are going on in that Carolina locker room. That would be maybe a a question for Rob Brindamore when I'm not fucked up in the next interview. (laughs) I'm guessing man-on-man ties you out way more. No, there's... It does, and, and, and going back to Witt's comments about them not having a, enough offenses, when you play a whole season like that and then you get against better teams who are more offensive and more skilled, the deeper you go, playing man-on-man and covering those guys gets more exhausting. You're, it's more mental fortitude. Is that the word, mental fortitude? Oh, my God. Look, words, you're rubbing yeah, off words, on me, yeah. Witt, boy. Um, <laughs> so that could be as a result of not having enough gas in the tank in order to put the puck in the back of the net. So. Yeah, it, it could become a factor, all right? It's a great question. Um, Thanks, pal. Go ahead. Uh, quickly, um, Bruins fans right now, um, the way it looks, are the ones who are the most disgusted with the current playoff format. I texted you guys this. Yes. It, it, I, 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 something has to be done because for the Bruins right now to have to play Tampa after finishing with where, where they finish, if everything were to end the way it is, like that's bullshit, dude. That that's not right, and and that's why this system makes no sense to me. I don't I don't get why you can't go back to one verse eight. We've talked about this a bunch, but Bruins fans right now are looking at it. if it ended today, and the Islanders are sitting there at eighty three, eighty five points or whatever. We have to play Tampa after the Rangers get Detroit. It's like I don't get that. So right. I want to see what ends up happening because it doesn't make sense to me to to reward to not reward a team for having such a great regular season. So, and, and I think we talked about it this earlier in the year where I said I was a traditionalist. Now, this is what, where I, I go back the other way. If this is how it's going to be and you're not going to reward teams for having that good of a regular season where all of a sudden they're playing the, you know, the second best team is playing the third best team in the conference as opposed to the way it actually should be, one through eight, that's why I'm okay opening up playoffs if they were to do and, and create those, those smaller play-in games where you would have like seven through 10 play a best of three, much like Elliot said. Yeah. Because like 
the integrity aspect to me is being washed away with the example that you just said. I think it's bullshit. You yeah. also said in the group, and we've talked about this before, the one through 16 would be. That's my dream. That's my that dream. That would be a fun never happen. Ex- Bring back the chaos. Bring ne- back never going to happen. But I, I seriously think they need to reconsider going back one to eight because it is bullshit. Why are we doing this regular season if, if, if that's the reward you get for putting up 110 points in the regular season? It's crazy. It, it, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. The Bruins have proved everyone wrong, and they, can, they could get stuck by a Tampa. It's like, that's crazy to me. I, I think we've said this for, uh, before, too, is it would be cool because we, we do the lottery draft. Maybe each team has to reveal the card. So, like, let's say New York wins the President's Trophy, and they're in the East. They get to flip over the card of who they want to select to play in the first round. That would be sick. No. No, I think we chatted about this. The bulletin board material playoff format. Oh, that's yeah. What we, oh, that's yeah. what we want. Yep. I, I said before I'm opposed to playoff expansion, but now that I think about it, there was a time for a while that 16 out of 21 teams got in the playoffs. Like That's actually obscene when you say those numbers out loud. So, yeah, if they could tinker with it, make it more interesting because the, the NBA seems to be very popular with what they do with the you know, in-season tournament there, which – I think it's a criticism of the players because they have to motivate them to want to win in the season, if, if nothing else. But and I mean, don't they have a play in? Doesn't the NBA have a play yes, in for the oh, playoffs? Of course, yeah, of the course. Turn, yeah. yeah, yeah, both of those things. But yeah, either way, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm fucking dying. Jesus, cl- I know, let me hey, clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> mixing a water, please. Right. I'm mixing about seventeen. Shut up, body armor. Uh, we haven't even talked about our guest yet. Uh, right now, we're going to bring on Craig Morgan. He's been covering the Coyotes forever. He knows every little nook and cranny about him. Of course, the team tweeted out uh, their whole new, uh, uh, what's the word, Biz? Uh, what the, the the pictures of a fucking like, arena. arena plan? Yeah. Uh, Artist yeah. renderings. Bingo, G, thanks. And the, basically, the Coyotes are very, very confident that they're going to win this land auction in June. Uh, 95 acres. It's going to be a $3 billion project. So we're going to bring on Craig right now. This guy is a tremendous reporter for the Coyotes. Yeah, he's going to provide some insight. So, then over to Craig Morgan. All right. Oh, yeah, some sorry, people this. might say, oh, uh, oh, now you're having uh, Craig Morgan on to talk about this. But I get asked constantly about this arena situation and whether the team's staying in the desert. There's nothing more than I want than hockey to stay in the desert. But he knows all the behind the scenes stuff as to what's going on. A lot of uh, great in depth answers as to the actual truth of how this has transpired. So, we thank thank Craig Morgan for his time, and 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 he's always been unbelievable to me. And uh, I couldn't have been more blessed with a better media staff around us in Arizona during my time there as a player, and then even in retirement joining the media side. So I love all you guys, Heat House, Jody Jackson. The list goes on. I know fucking Yans is punching his steering wheel right now, saying too many thank yous, but I love all you guys and uh, enjoy this interview with Craig Morgan. Very insightful. What up, guys? Before we continue, I want to talk to you about DraftKings. We know hockey games move fast, but with the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the National Hockey League, you could score faster than anything happening on the ice. This week, new customers can bet 5 bucks and get $150 instantly in bonus bets. Uh, Tuesday night, tonight, if you're listening on Tuesday, we got the Red Wings versus the Capitals, an enormous matchup with playoff implications everywhere. And the Red Wings are minus 150. So you like them at home against the Caps who've been struggling? That's an option right there if you want to bet that game. They got lines for everything. North Carolina listeners, don't forget, DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. You like the Hurricanes? You live in North Carolina? Go check them out on the DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook and use code CHICKLETS. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code CHICKLETS. The crown is yours. All right, it's time for our first guest today. Been doing a terrific job covering a team that's certainly had a share of headlines over the years. You can read his in-depth Arizona Coyote stuff at gophnx.com. And it's great to welcome to the Spit and Chicklets podcast for the first time. Greg Morton, thanks for joining us, buddy. How's, how's it been? Great. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, nice timing, by the way, as I mentioned just before we were going on, right, right, right as a tweet comes out from Salt Lake City. So here we go again. Oh, yeah. Let's start the rumor mill. Morgs, <laughs> what, what's been going on? What's the latest? I mean, I know it's been a, a gong show for a long time, even since when I played there as far as ownership, but... Obviously, they keep posting these renderings. How are they going to have to, what are they going to have to do in order to secure this land deal in North Scottsdale? 
Well, it starts with the auction on June 27th. The Arizona State Land Department just posted that publicly, which they have to do before this process can move forward. It's got to post be posted a minimum of 10 weeks. It's actually going to be posted for 12 because that's that's when the auction date is. And they literally got to show up and win the auction. And this is this is a live auction. That's one of the I mean, to add to the theater over the years for the Coyotes, there's going to be a live auction where you're holding up paddles. There's going to be an auctioneer, and they literally have to win it. I don't know if there are going to be other bidders. When you look back through history, since 2017, there have been well over 100 of these land auctions. Less than a quarter of them have had more than one bidder. So there's a chance, there's a good chance based on history that Alex shows up and he's the only guy there. But, you know, Biz, you and me both being around the Coyotes for a while, we're, pro- we're both expecting there to be like 10 other bidders at this particular one. So we'll see how it plays out. That's step one, though. They have to win the auction or it's game over. Is there a minimum price that it's set at? And if that's not reached, it doesn't sell? Well, you have to put in a minimum bid of $68.5 million, and then it goes up in $100,000 increments. So it just keeps going back and forth if there are other bidders. Now, I want to point out too, like it's not just, okay, you, you got the most money, you win the bid. You have to show up with a well-hatched plan too. The Arizona State Land Department isn't going to say, okay, we'll give you the land and you can sit on it for 10 years. You have to have a plan in place. So any any other group, that was thinking about bidding on this land, they would have had to be putting together a significant plan like the Coyotes did all along. Okay, Who so owns the land currently? It's, it's literally state-owned. It's state trust land. There's a, a bunch of state-owned land around that they'll sell off in parcels. And a big part of this, one of the good sides of this is the, the proceeds go to fund education in Arizona. So that's, that's a wow. cool side effect of it. But yeah, they, they sell these off. Yeah, I mean, if you go on their site, you can see all these auctions listed over the past you know, there's there's some coming up in the next couple of months, and then you can li- see them listed over the past seven years. They they sell off land from time to time, and as Biz knows, there's a ton of land available here still. So you you talked about this plan they have to have in place and showing renderings and what they plan on doing with it. Do you think and and this isn't coming from me? Like I I've had personal good experiences with the Morellos, but it seems as if though maybe they've upset some people in the area. Obviously Glendale, the building situation there. Um, I think that they expected that the Tempe thing was going to be a home run and that it was set in stone and then that didn't end up coming to fruition. Do you think because of maybe uh, a past business dealings or things not being up to what they thought they were going to be, that there's a chance that they don't sell them this land? Like, do you, do you, you know what I'm saying? Is there a reputation aspect to maybe why they wouldn't get the, the land if they offered the amount of money? I think it's fair to question the reputation, absolutely, with what went on. It, it, listen, I, a, a couple of narratives, not to get too deep in the weeds here. No, but we, we want to get deep in the weeds. <laughs> there's this notion that they got kicked out of Glendale for not paying their bills. That's that's 100% incorrect. Literally, I have the Glendale city manager on the record telling me they, they, they parted ways because they wouldn't sign a lease of 12 or more years. That's what Glendale wanted. If the Coyotes had agreed to that, they would have taken them back in a heartbeat. But the Coyotes knew, and Gary Bettman was very public about saying it doesn't work in Glendale financially. We've proven that over and over again. But you're right about the reputation. They go to Tempe. They're telling everybody they're leading in polling. This is a home run. They've got the support of pretty much every politician in Tempe, all the businesses. And then they run a lousy campaign. They got outpointed by the other campaigns so badly, they convinced voters that this was bad for Tempe, and they lost. And, and listen, Alex, Alex has made some enemies in this community, I, in the business community. I don't think his reputation is spotless in this community. Having said that, that's not how the Arizona State land auction works. It's, it's not like they're going to decide, oh, we're not selling. They already approved this at, at, at a meeting. So it's going to auction. He just has to show up and win it. So going to June 27th, you said it was? Yeah. All right. So say they win it. And they get they get this land. Are they then going to need taxpayers to pay for the arena? Like, how will the funding of actually building this go from there? Well, if you, I, I wrote a long Q and A with uh, the president and CEO Javier Gutierrez, uh, and they're going to explore something called a theme park district, which actually it would be a state owned entity, so it would be the state making those decisions on on uh, what 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 it looks like, the structure of it. Right? It's this is a bill that's already passed. Um, the, the benefit that it would give the Coyotes is they wouldn't pay property tax if if that goes to fruition. But Javier said that's going to be a separate pursuit. It's not going to stop them from pursuing the land and building this arena anyway. So we'll see how that plays out. That's down the road. The other immediate deadline, though, after the auction, they have to close on this deal. Um, and, and Javier told me in that Q&A, they plan to close 
within 30 days. That's normally what the statute says you have to do. There has been some wiggle room with other groups in the past, but they plan on paying within 30 days to close this. And then you can move forward uh, and we can talk about all the, all the other deadlines, whatever you guys want to know. So if they get the land and all of a sudden, all right, boom, we got this land, huge deal. Are they then going to say like, we have two or three more seasons playing at uh, ASU's arena? Like wh- what will the future hold until this arena is built and done and ready to roll? Yeah, they, they've been public about that. It's going to take three years. So that means three more years at Mullet Arena. Now, if you remember the original agreement that they signed, it was three years with an option for a fourth. So this would this would be one year beyond that. At least that's what they're saying, right? If everything goes according to their timeline, you're talking about five years at Mullet Arena. And obviously, that's not going to sit well with a lot of people around the league, most notably the NHLPA. I, uh, Craig, I know the NHL says one thing uh, publicly, but they must be pretty concerned about this behind closed doors. I know there were bill paying issues in the past. That Has, has any of, anyone in the NHL like expressed to you like, that oh, they, they're leery about what's going on here. They, they seem really pot committed to this franchise at this point. Well, I mean, I, I think if you heard Gary Bettman say he was reasonably confident that this was going to happen, that I mean, that's that's as far as you get with Gary, right? Uh, he's very careful with his words. He chooses them very carefully. He's an attorney. But yeah, like, listen, behind the scenes, everybody's concerned at that's, this point. When you consider, and I know the Morellos aren't responsible for everything that came before them, but when you consider the entire history of this franchise in Arizona, I mean, Pitt has said it best. It's been a gong show. It's been crazy that we're talking about this for 15 years. They're still trying to find a permanent arena solution. Say worst case scenario that they don't get it, right? That, then what happens? Because June 27th is so late. I believe somebody said that when they announced the Thrashers were moving to Winnipeg, it was mid-May-ish. So June 27th, is it too late to, like, will they be back next year no matter what? Like, what have you heard in terms of worst case scenario for the Phoenix and Scottsdale area. Well, Bill Daly addressed this at the GM meeting. Someone asked him if it w- if that date made it too late to move. And he said, probably. So that's that's not a definitive answer. It's probably too late. So what, make of that what you can. Again, that's, that's a lawyer's dodge, right? I, I don't know where the answer is there. There's a, a strong possibility they could play another season at Mullet and then figure it out. But everybody knows that relocation is on the table. Javier said it to me in that Q&A. If we don't get this, we have to consider relocating the team. Marks, I've gave my biased opinion on I th- the fact that I think that North Scottsdale would be the perfect location for an arena and a district because of all the money that's gone there, the the growth in that er- era, how it's kind of even spread out to as far as Cave Creek. And there really isn't anything that entertaining over there. Do you think it would work in that location? And do you think that's the perfect location for it? Well, I mean, for money guys like you, Biz, I think it's the perfect location. You know, for schleps like me, though, you know, I don't guys, live in North Scottsdale. No, I'm just doing that. <laughs> Listen, I, I think it's a, a, it's a far better location than Glendale. Let me start there, right? We, we saw the issues with Glendale, and I'm not saying that was the only issue. People think, oh, the location will solve everything. You got to win, too. You got to have stable ownership. You got to win to have success. This is a fickle market. They support winners here. But in terms of location, this is way better. That, as you mentioned, there's, there's a lot of money there. There's a lot of season ticket holders, a lot of premium season ticket holders. Aside from that, the corporate base is along that corridor as well, along the 101. And the population base is over here. The wealth base is over here. It's all on the east side. I thought Tempe was the perfect location because it was more centrally located. Five minutes from the airport, 10 minutes from downtown, easy access from Scottsdale and from the southeast valley. You know, the towns like Gilbert, Chandler, Mesa, where they in Tempe, where they also have a lot of season ticket holders. But this is a good location. I think it'll work. And I, I just want to go back to that. Like you said, they they ran a poor campaign. Like what what didn't they prepare themselves for? Like why why were why was it a bad campaign? Did they not spend enough money? Did they not educate people enough around the area as to what it was going to provide them? Because from my understanding, there were also maybe some lies from the other side. Uh, mm-hmm. saying that it was going to cost the taxpayers more money when, in fact, it's the opposite. Now that there's nothing going there, it's going to cost them more. Yeah, and I, I would say it's the latter. It's the information. Listen, I haven't looked at the books, so nobody can tell me definitively what they spent on the campaign unless I can see the books. I don't know that answer. But I was out going to meetings. In fact, I went sort of, no, nobody knew the hell who the hell I was in Tempany. I went to a couple of these opposition meetings, and I heard some of the things being floated there, like this narrative, only got kicked out of uh, Glendale because they didn't pay their bills. So there was a lot of misinformation out there. And you're right. 
They convinced them their taxes were going up. If you looked at the structure of that deal, the only taxes that were going to pay down that, that whole project were if you actually visited something on the site. If you went to a hotel or a restaurant or a game, there was a surcharge, a tax on that, and that helped pay down the debt. There were no taxes associated with the city of Tempe or Tempe taxpayers, but they were really effective in pushing that message and also saying, you know, it's a billionaire, it's a corrupt billionaire. It's, it's an easy tag to throw on someone, right? All, all billionaires are corrupt and they convince voters. And the, the coyote side of it, they just didn't have good messaging. I mean, they're, first of all, they're floating it as the Rodeo Drive of Tempe. That doesn't, that doesn't fly in Tempe. No. That's what it's all about. So no. it was just, it was not understanding the people who were going to vote and, and communicating directly to them. Yeah. Get your Louis Vuitton belts and Hermes ba- blankets before you head into, uh, to watch the coyotes here in, the, in Tempe district. Now, okay. So when these meetings were going on and, and they were shitting on coyotes ownership, saying that it wasn't going to work and that it was going to cost the taxpayers more money. Did they, did the coyotes not have a voice in those rooms? Like, were they not present in these meetings to, to, to debunk all these rumors? And the follow-up question is, is there a possibility if this North Scottsdale land situation doesn't work out, could they go back and revisit Tempe? Uh, for, to answer your first question, these were specific meetings hosted by the opposition. So know that the Coyotes were not present at those. Now, they tried to get the message out. Another thing that they, they probably made a mistake on is they started late. The other, the other campaign started earlier, so they got their message in people's heads, and then it was hard to debunk all those myths. So that was it. Um, my understanding is there's no way they're going back to Tempe at this point. I mean, you have to go through the RFP process again. You already know how the electorate feels. The sad thing, and, and the thing you alluded to at the start, Biz, is you've got a dump sitting there. And, and as former me- Mayor Neil Giuliano told me, it's been that way for 70 years, and it's going to be there when I die because nobody is willing to clean it up. There's a lot of cleanup that has to take place, and it's really expensive. The Coyotes were willing to put that bill. No other developer has been willing to to date. My uh, question for you is you're so dialed in here. Everyone's mentioned if you need to know anything about the Coyotes and the arenas and what's happening, it's talking to you. So you're you're in tune with like the team and everything as well. And players wouldn't be honest and probably say it outright, but... From what you hear, are they are they like disgusted playing at Mullet? Like the thought of playing there three, four more years, you think guys would be like, I just don't want to be a part of that. I think it's a mixed bag. It depends on who you talk to. And listen, I, I think part of this comes from just all the the criticism you get from around the league. You know, it's a little embarrassing yeah. when the entire league, all the other players are ripping the plays and the PA is doing a really vocal job of that. So I think it's ramped up a bit. What, if if they announce, for instance, if they win this auction and they say, we're going to be here three more years, I wouldn't be surprised at all if there are some players on this current roster that say, you know what, I'm done. I, I'm requesting a trade. I want out of here. And I wouldn't blame them one damn bit. First of all, yeah, it's not it's not a, an NHL facility in, in terms of size, although they've put some work into it. But secondly, if you're going to stay at Mullet for three more years, it's a pretty clear sign that you're in the rebuild for three more years. So yes. some of these guys are like in the prime of their careers. Do you want to waste the prime of your career in a rebuild? I wouldn't blame him one bit for doing, you know, what Jacob Chikrin did and moving on to another possibility where you might have the chance to win sooner. Where is it another rebuild? (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's that. I mean, yeah, you better take a good look at the grass that you're looking on the other side of the fence because, Yeah. yeah mess still. Greg, I know there's an issue with the NHLPA. Is the team still kind of blowing them off as, or have things improved on that front? I, I don't think they've changed at all. I just don't think there's been anything public lately. Marty Walsh, listen, we we all know that the, the PA really doesn't have any power to make anything happen here. The only power they have is rhetoric. And Marty Walsh is a politician. He was the mayor of Boston. He knows rhetoric well. And he, I, I think the players are really happy with what he's done so far because it, it feels like they finally have a leader who's got their back. So he's doing everything he can, banging the drum, putting the pressure on the league. I don't know how effective it's going to be, but in terms of the relationship between them and the Coyotes, I don't think anything's changed. They haven't met. Uh, you know, Marty Walsh has been talking about maybe wanting to meet with the Coyotes, but Javier told me in that Q&A, there's been no meeting. So I don't know that anything's cooled on that front. And and Craig, I said earlier, like my relationships with them has been fine. The ownership group, Morello's. Is there anything in the meantime before this land auction closes that you think that they can do in order to maybe uh, uh, gain some public opinion and, and uh, maybe some good PR in the meantime? 
Because like I said, like there, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, maybe rumors and misconceptions about them that is out there. There are some things maybe that they haven't handled necessarily that well. What do yeah. you think do, moving forward they can do better in order to ensure um, you know, that hockey stays in the desert and people are comfortable with them as owners? There's only so much you can do with, with public messaging because with, with the past, with this group and previous groups, everybody's going to say, yeah, 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 we've heard it all before. So there's only so much you can do, but that doesn't mean you should stop messaging, telling people your plans. Uh, you should have a better social media campaign that you have because they made a lot of mistakes on Twitter, including yes. tagging the mayor of Phoenix recently. Probably not a good move. <laughs> you know, you know, the other thing you can do is I, I think they owe it to the staff and to the players to address them and say, hey, here's what's happening. We've been yeah. hearing about the supposed meeting that Alex Morello is going to have with the players and the staff for a long time. It's gotten canceled a couple times. All the players are wondering, what, what does my future look like? I, like? There's like seven guys that had babies this year are having babies. They've got houses. There's a life away from the rink for NHL players. And I think we all dismiss that like, oh, you know, whatever. You're, you're a professional hockey player. Deal with it. Move on. There's a lot of people impacted like this by, by something like this. So at least give them a sense of what's happening, what you're trying to do to maybe try to allay some of those fears. And Craig, even you, and 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 I'll 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 end what I'm going to say by saying like I, I've been blessed to play in Arizona. Um, you know, it was the best years of my life playing in the NHL, and I met so many incredible people. Not even just the players, but all you guys have done such an amazing job covering the team. And uh, I love you guys. Hockey belongs in the desert, and I hope for all of you guys' sake on the media side and all those people around the building and in the valley that hockey does stay there and the, that the Murillos are able to figure this out. Yeah, I mean. It, it, it's a stupid little dream for me, but I've always wanted to cover NHL hockey and I've been blessed to do it for a quarter century. I hope it continues because, yeah, I love my job. Hey, I, boys, I tell you the time that Craig got me suspended for five games from the Coyotes when I was doing media. Let's hear it. Or what? We did, <laughs> we did an article. I thought he'd cleared it with the team. He's like, hey, you mind talking about your like CBD and cannabis use? I'm like, yeah, I don't give a shit. So we did this big article and then I got sussy for five games for talking about smoking uh. dope. <laughs> you got seven days to talk. <laughs> is it, it's not legal in Arizona, right? It, it is. is. It is now. Yeah. Oh, they can't suss you good. then. Uh, that was yeah. I didn't. I didn't like how they handled that one either. I, I, Buddy, I don't know. if weed's legal and they sussed you, and that's brutal. Yeah, I got cut r ripping the, the the bong with Howler pregame though <laughs> in, in, in the mascot room. Well, Maybe I, that's I what funny. did it. <laughs> I was gonna say that when you talk about the auction and that it's a physical auction like i was thinking maybe they send biz and he's the representative but then if the price got too high he'd be like no 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 boys i'm looking to say like they'd be like what the <laughs> fuck no biz wouldn't agree to put the put the hang up he's cheap the, right the price hey. won't get too high biz will get too high and so <laughs> is is there yeah yeah just rip the ball and it's like hey 200 million biz we told you to stop at 100 um but it's is it ryan smith the the current owner of the utah jazz yeah is there a chance or is it legal or do you have to maybe have like um, established residency in Arizona? Could he show up to this auction being a billy goat and just continue to outbid the Arizona Coyotes ownership group? I mean, like I said before, you, you got to come with a well-hatched plan for the land. It can't just be, oh, here's I'm, I'm going to beat you on the price. OK, what are you doing with the land? They want to know that, too. So there's there's some insurance there. Yeah, I've heard like I've heard so many wild rumors about who's going to be bidding. Everyone's assuring me someone's going to be bidding. Like I looked into two of them and like Mayo sits on the south side of the freeway. Everybody was telling me Mayo's definitely bidding. I called Mayo. No, we're not bidding. We have a ton of land. We, we just re uh, acquired on the south side. And then I did it with a, another body as well. And they're like, no, we have no interest. So at that point, I was like, all right, I'm giving up. I'm not chasing every damn rumor out there. I'll come in as an enforcer and Marillos can just hold the sign up and anybody who outbids them, I'll just sucker. That's how we're going to win this bad boy. Get the public opinion on our side again with Don with a Donnie Brook at the... In North Scottsdale. Greg, one quick one. What do you think of their Twitter feed, the, the admin there? It's, it, it's Sometimes it's off the wall. I mean, it, they are funny, but other times it's like, man, is, is this helping the franchise? Who's running it? Uh, that, that is the big question. <laughs> please, please Greg, come on. You <laughs> know who's talk? running Holla. it. Say the words. <laughs> Which time of day are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that's unreal. <laughs> oh, man, uh, that's funny. Well, uh, you can read them on uh, yeah. gophnx.com. Craig, you, I've been following your stuff for a while. It's terrific. You're probably one of the most in-depth guys they got out there. So thanks for joining us to discuss this uh, very complex issue. Thanks, thanks for Craig. having me, guys. Really appreciate you trying to pursue truth. That's what I, I try it. to do. You're the man. Absolutely. Thanks, Craig. Thanks for everything.
Take care, guys. Before we go any further, I need to talk about Peter Millar, the best golf gear in the league. I've been wearing it for such a long time. It was before Chicklets was a dream in my eye. I've been wearing Peter Millar. This actually right here, Seminole Golf Club, lucky enough to play that once. This is Peter Millar, a quarter zip, what they're known for, but they got everything. Spring is here. Golf season's here. So get involved with Peter Millar. This time of the year can bring a wide range of temperatures with cool mornings and nights. And as always, our friends at Peter Millar have the perfect piece for your next round. The Merge Hybrid Jacket features a premium performance fabric that offers lightweight warmth and water resistance perfect for the season. Like I said, with this quarter zip, the golf shirts, the pants, the shorts, I'm telling you. If you like golf and if you like being comfortable or looking good, Peter Millar's for you. So head on over right now to petermillar.com slash chicklets to check out the Merge Hybrid Jacket as well as the rest of their performance outerwear offerings. Peter Millar. Thank you very much to Craig Morgan. We appreciate him coming on and kind of explaining everything because I, I, I was with many others and being confused as to what's kind of going on. So we appreciate that. I, I will say Ryan Smith, the owner of the Jazz that we talked about. If I'm him and I want an NHL team in Salt Lake, I want to get the Coyotes. I want to have them move over as opposed to getting a a, 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 a new team. A, a, what is it called? Expansion. Expansion. Expansion team. The Coyotes have a bright future. They got some Cooley and all these prospects. Like I would much rather get them and, and start my team in Salt Lake City. I don't know what's going to end up happening, but... Personally, I'd rather take where they're going to be, be in a few years than an expansion team. Um, one other thing before we continue, Sandbagger, it's back Wednesday, tomorrow, 6 o'clock. Taylor Luan and Will Compton bussing with the boys, a scramble, a little, a little special, a little special sandbag, a little scramble action. So 6 o'clock Wednesday, check that out, please. I watched it. It's pretty funny. They're probably so. wondering what the fuck that means. Yeah, it I was going to say, the first that. time me and Wit have never we we're not playing together yeah. i end up partnering with will, uh, will and then he ends up partnering with taylor you know i'm kind of like the will of the bus and the boys pod and taylor the, the the reputable guy who made all the dough and was a great player was he a pro bowler i would imagine I, he probably made I, one i believe so i yeah. think so well, if, if, if you made 85 million you gotta think you're on one pro bowl exactly exactly just like the money you made i would imagine you made an all-star game right i would have and then i got hurt Okay, well, you you got picked. You got picked to go, and then you couldn't go. Not technically. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! But listen, Whoa. listen. I was leading the team in scoring, and you got to take someone from every team. It would have been me, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Crosby was on the me, team. Right? Of Crosby was on the team at the time. Oh, this was Edmonton. So it's Edmonton, dude. Oh, I was never leading well, the Penguins in scoring. <laughs> I don't even know if I was leading Edmonton in scoring. I think I was. That's when they had fan voting and, and, and no, nobody I was a voted young star. for you. I was oh, a young star in the Young Stars game. That's when I sat in that the bathroom. Counts. And, that counts. Yeah. That counts as I was, well. I was at an all-star weekend. Yeah. I'll say that. I'll say that. Uh, and, and where can you find that uh, sandbagger, G? I'll let you say it because people are sick of me saying it. YouTube, baby. All video platforms. We like all video platforms, but you can find it on YouTube. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> Let's just hope you uh, tailor out. Well all right, you awake? Know. You good? I'm awake, buddy. Oh, there you, you guys, go. You sound pass. great. Yeah. I know, it sounds awful. Mix in a lo around. lozenger. Yeah, hopefully, either Taylor or Will didn't have an old deal with Jersey Jerry that went sideways and fucking fucks everything up again. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. if I can... Put the scab off. All right, you're on a Try you're on a different a planet right now. Are you coming but, off right, the drugs from this speak. weekend? All right, what? I can't make a joke about it. Or something? No, you can make it's just hard understanding it through your muffled voice and your your twitching and and everything else you have going on. Looking through that heavy sack on that screen. <laughs> All right, it's just grumpy that he hasn't been back in a sandbagger since he was blacked out looking at Pluto that one time. Actually, with the last one I was at, I was kind of disappointed that one clip wasn't in it. I mean. The, it was edited, done. It was perfect, but like it was a little slow start. And I remember, I think it was the third hole. You pulled away, and you like, Ari, get buckled and do something. It was like it was like the impetus to fuck. Like, all right, then you, you did turn it back. on after that. Ah, that's all. I, I would have thought that would have made the clips. Alas, it didn't. 
Uh, gee, you're know, the college guy right now. You've been fucking getting some mad scoops. Fill us in what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I broke uh, I broke some news this past week. Matthew Wood, uh, UConn first round pick of the Nashville Predators, transferring to Minnesota. So we got to break that news, which was pretty cool. Colin Graff, probably the top free college free agent out there of, at Quinnipiac, just signed with San Jose. A bit shocking for some people. Uh, I wasn't too shocked by this, to be honest with you. Uh, I think, you know, going to San Jose, it's a place where you can step in, probably play top six minutes immediately. Will Smith's on the way. He saw how good Will Smith was. Macklin Celebrini likely on the way. So I think the future is uh, bright, actually. It's weird to say in San Jose. So I don't think it's a crazy move for Colin Graff. The one thing in college hockey that kind of uh, surprised me this week, and I'd love to get Witt's opinion on it, is Will Smith was not named for the Hobie Baker. And I understand the decision by the committee to not put him in there. The three finalists were Macklin Celebrini of BU, Cutter Gauthier of BC, and Jackson Blake of North Dakota. Now, Will Smith is putting together one of... He, he leads the NCAA in points as a freshman by five points. He's putting together the fourth best... Right now, he currently has the fourth best freshman season ever. He's two points, only two points behind Jack Eichel and Kyle Connor. Is Everyone he a defenseman? About, no, Will Smith's not a defenseman. Oh, okay. No. Everyone talked about Jack Eichel like he was the second coming of Christ when he was at BU that year, and he was, but Will Smith is right on par. Now, he's come in late. He's had a few like seven point games here at the end of the season, but I think for a kid to have one of the best freshman seasons in NCAA history, to be leading the NCAA in points and not even to get a nomination, I think is crazy. But at the same time, I think you can't have two BC kids and a BU kid because you can't take Cutter Gauthier off. He scored 37 goals this season. And Macklin Celebrini was probably the best player. Sounds in all like they're hockey. having the same problem as they are in the NHL where there should be four guys on the ballot. Too many good players. Yeah, put four guys on the ballot. Wait, what do you think of that? I think Celebrini should win it, and I don't care at all about <laughs> Will Smith or Cutter Gauthier or Jackson Blake. Okay. I mean, all you're right, not going to have... You, when you have really good players on one team, they end up screwing each other a little bit, right? You're going to pick yeah. one guy from BC. So uh, I probably would have taken Will Smith over Cutter Gauthier. I think the goals was, was the biggest aspect in that. Yeah. But Celebrini is better than them all. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think you watch Ryan Leonard, and I think Ryan Leonard like dominates the play more than... We know Gautier you love BCG. We know you I love, love BC. Oh, I love BC. Hey, G, I'll tell you right now, if BU plays BC, like, and you're sitting there next to me, and you're cheering for BC... Oh, he's going like, to be I'll, in I'll, your hey, face. No, I'll never... He is going to hey, be in hey, your face. I'll never talk to you again. Dude. Oh, shut up. No, 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 no. He hasn't given a fuck about BC since I met him, okay? And if my former team is playing for the national title and he all of a sudden loves BC and is in my face after telling me when I met him he loves BU and Jay Pandolfo, I will forever hate him. <laughs> I'm hey, saying I've, this. But I hey, told forever. you, they gave me unprecedented access. I have to... What they, are you? Gee, you've gotten that access from... Gee, you've got, you're, you're unprecedented. You've gotten it from... 50 teams are giving you that access. G. Just know you're not going to be alone because I'm on the BC train Let's go. too. Let's Get go, me a Eagles, jersey. Baby. I'm coming right for you, Winnie. Yeah, you're coming for it on purpose to rattle me. There's a difference. G has never liked BC. He was a BU kid growing up. No, dude. no, 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 no. I've said this on the pod. You can go back and find it. I was a BC kid growing up. I loved them. They had the small guys. They always had the Nathan Gerbys, the Brian Giantas. And then when my friend... Brian Diffley, when he went and go went and played at BU, I had to make the jump. So it was like after high school. Gee, you from told then on me out, when you met like Pandolfo forever. when you were little, you loved BU and you loved J J Pandolfo. Loved Pandolfo, but I'm telling you, you can go back and listen. I never said I loved BU as a kid. I loved, I loved BC, but then high school hit and I was all in, all in on the Terriers because of my boy Diffy, who just won a championship in the EIHL. Shout you, out you, to him. You know why I like BC better? Because I like that, BU. No, because Nettie oh, cause Havern BC. went to BC. Because Nettie Ooh. fucking Havern went there. All right, Brides, that's fair. That's we lost fair. an eagle last Brides. night. <laughs> we lost an eagle. Nettie and I have been battling. <laughs> I'm down a ton of money to Ned. Ned's just in my pocket. And we've been betting every game. They're one and three against BC. Is there any way that if it is BU versus BC that we could fly in Nettie Havern for the final game? Now, some of you yes. are like, who the fuck yes. is Nettie Havern? Yes. Nettie Havern was uh, my former teammate with the Wheeling Nailers who slid me back a, a, a beautiful, 
beautiful saucer pass right into the slot area that I could have stepped into for a goal five on three, but I was too busy fighting Lane Manson at center ice. So I'm on the BC train, and he told some crazy story. Do you remember it about – because he came on the podcast, and you guys can go back and listen to the interview – he had a teammate who was like at the bar getting fucked up and they were partying and then he had like a jammer so they had to bring out the defibrillator. Yeah, he wasn't then, there like, yet. He wasn't there. It was before him. Oh, okay. So a jammer is a hard... Biz calls heart attacks jammers. <laughs> but it, it, I, I just go back and listen to the Ned yeah. Haven interview from years ago. Um, and he, he goes... It's, it's an incredible Boston College hockey story. I don't know if it's as incredible for the guy it actually happened to. That oh, was he like probably dead. wears it with a badge of but, honor. But, but, but uh, I, ideally for me, as much as I'd love to beat BC to win the national title, like I'm rooting for Michigan and then BU could play Michigan and then I don't even have to deal with you two idiots <laughs> in my face. I'm getting my face painted when they, when they play them in the finals. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Ugh, but Jesus G Christ. is a different story, and he fucking yeah. knows it too. Hey, yeah. I so yeah. I saw Dave's tweet when Dave was uh they did Barstool Live from Scottsdale, and he was like, "Me sitting next to Rico Bosco during this game, knowing I have this much money on the line in my head." The first thing I was thinking was, "Fuck, if I have to sit next to Wit during a national championship, BCBU, I might just go find another." But like, like you've done, you've done a great job with the with the um college hockey, and like you've done a bunch of teams. So there's just no reason for you to be. They this gave him the huge... biggest bag. What are you talking about? They bought him a fucking double wide trailer in Boston. BC's got I some just, dough. I don't want our relationship to end because of this, and it's all on you. And if you were a growing up, BC went to BC games like love like it you weren't so it, it's just so fake that I'm gonna hate you and now, I don't if I can provide you. if you I get can a, provide do you get a, a ring with do you get a ring no, if they I don't win? get shit oh if I can provide a picture of me as a youth in a, in my BC jersey that I used to wear everywhere AI. will that get me off the hook AI. <laughs> he got an uh, AI no AG. because of what you told me about <laughs> Pandolfo and meeting him and loving the Terriers I just I can't I I I also told the story on Game Notes how I was a diehard Humane fan growing up. So this I'm, I'm all over the place. Oh. I'm all over the place. Let's I can't stand honest. people like you who just root for all these different teams. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. At, at, what, what do you think most people in the city, BC or BU? I think Bottom. inner city is think, BU. Outer city is BC. I think the suburbs is all BC. I think if you're closer to the city, you're BU. What's I, think it's pretty, I think it's pretty split. Although maybe more alumni live, maybe more BC alumni live around here. So it's it, it, they might be a, a a bigger fan base where a lot of BU alumni maybe maybe aren't from here, so they move back home or other cities. It seems pretty even though. Ninety thousand dollars to attend BU next year with ninety k. What what is it to Fuck. attend BC? Don't know. Didn't look it up. We're not talking about them. I was just talking about what BU. Are you talking about? same as Davenport University. <laughs> BC is uh, probably it's... more expensive. No, BU is actually more. How do you know if you don't know what BC costs, dummy? Because someone tweeted out the other day the top 10 most expensive universities link. in the country. And, the and BU was like number four. Oh, BC wow. wasn't on the list. Suck on that, Wit. This Suck guy on runs what? That he doesn't know the other schools this fucking cost when he's bragging about BUs? He he's fucking liked BU. This is a joke. <laughs> Anyone listening is disgusted right now. They nope, know he's a me. phony little fake puke BC fan that never gave a shit about them until Will Smith let him... Curdles ball sack in the weight room. <laughs> uh, oh, I love it. I love it. Go this Eagles, shit. baby. Let's go, baby. Frozen Jesus four. Christ. As long as we're not going to St. Louis practice rink, I'm happy. Let's go, Minnie. We'll see you soon, Minnesota. Bottle signing. We got a what's the other thing too? We got a we got an appearance right before the game on Saturday. Yeah. We already talked about that. I know we already talked about it. I was fucking rehashing it. Let's well, go, fucking, BC. Well, don't worry about it. Smorgies, right. baby. See you there. Don't, Three to don't four. Worry. Don't worry. Uh, kind of sh uh, shitty news. Me. Shitty news for The Rock. Uh, the Newfoundland Growlers, uh, our buddy Terry Ryan suited up for earlier this year. The East Coast uh, membership was terminated by the league. They've been having some real financial problems. So basically, they pulled the plug on the franchise. I don't know what's going to happen. It doesn't look like they're going to be back. But it just sucks, man, for like any any city that loses a team, especially. You know, they're a huge, uh, you know, they did the economy going. You know, people worked here, whatever. They're selling pop popcorn, pulling tickets, whatever. I just feel bad that it happens. I don't know if they got to get another team, but I love it. They know they're selling a lot of popcorn. They're now selling they, a lot uh, of fucking po fucking popcorn. I'm sorry, <laughs> people like the jobs. It, it's a uh, 
the job creator, basically. But now it's gone, man. It just sucks. In some places, there's not a ton of you know other opportunities out there. So it just, it's a shitty thing that we got to acknowledge. Where, from yeah. my understanding, is is they had a deal with this team. I, and I want to say it's changed ownerships a bunch, and they've lost the team a bunch. It's a hard place to get to from a logistics standpoint. Yeah. And I guess that they were responsible for paying for the opposition's travel. And I somehow worked out a deal. I don't know if it's with Air Canada or another airline, but they're just getting hammered on costs to bring people over there and provide that entertainment for people on the rock. So I don't know if there's a deal to be made where, especially if there is another owner and they keep the team there in the ECHL, they can't be paying for other teams' travel. It's hard enough to survive as it is. I talked to Terry Ryan about it. He said that they average between 3,500 and 4,000 fans a game. And I said, well, is that how many that they say are there? Or And he said, no, they, they get great local support. The issue is in the cost it takes uh, to travel these guys in. So I don't know what the answer is, but we are looking at some point to have ownership in the ECHL. We've been... We've been weighing our options for a while here. We obviously had issues in Colorado Springs, but who knows? We'll keep digging on information. I told Terry Ryan any information that he does get that moves forward, reach out and let us know, and, and maybe there is a way that we can help, whether that's as minority owners or or whether it's as full-time owners where we're going to have fucking G running the operations among everything else. Wow. I was, I'll move there. Well, I you're not going to do it, R.A. Why you're going to run the team? You're going to sell the fucking popcorn or what? Oh, I'll be the fucking GM. <laughs> Create some fucking jobs already. Yeah, jo- jo- yeah. Like gone rebounds. Dude, it is crazy that they had to subsidize other teams' fucking flights. That out is there. That's, nuts. That, that's what that, that that's fucking... what sucks though is they're ju- it's so far away. The Rock's tough to get to, but they deserve oh, wow. a team. Like they had the AHL team for so long, and it, you just feel so bad for for fan bases. Like wh- whether it's when Winnipeg left to go to Atlanta, or or even the Growlers leaving leaving Newfoundland. It's just it sucks because these people love going to games. They love supporting their local team, and it's just kind of taken away from them out of nowhere, too. And those guys who had contracts, those are now done. So you feel for the players in, in, in terms of that, those guys catching on somewhere. So it, it's just it's a bummer of a story. And I heard from a ton of people, like on, on Twitter at least, like they, 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 they felt like it was a kick in the dick. They were looking forward to going next year, buying season tickets, and getting to watch a team locally. So that that's a shitty story. Um, yeah. we didn't I told mention- Terry. What? I was going to say, wait, I told Terry, I said, how cool would it be if like you and the Shorzy guys and us got together and we ended up owning an ECHL team? Think of the amount of like eyeballs and traction we can get on it. And depending on what we could negotiate, I don't know. I'm I'm all ears. I, I tell, told Terry to talk to those guys and – I mean, he's a local legend, so obviously him being involved makes so much sense. So hopefully that something can happen. We'd actually make Senior the coach, much like our ball hockey team. But what did you say? What were you saying, Whit, before I cut you off? Um, I was going to bring up quickly. I don't Have we mentioned Detroit in their little push for the playoffs at all? Because I watched Sunday's game against the Sabres, and uh, Cider, I know like – we were talking about his contract extension, what they can get him in as. Buddy, this guy is such a horse. And that, a horse. Edvins- that Edvinson's up playing too. Those were the two guys out on the ice at the end of the game. They're up 3-1. I actually had Detroit minus one and a half. I had a money line minus one and a half. Dude, they had, I think Buffalo pulled the goalie with about three and a half minutes left. They shot it down eight times and missed all eight. I was losing oh. it. Because, all right, I'm like, they're gonna, Buffalo's oh. going to get one. Lion made about eight, six saves to keep it 3-1. I won both bets. The tuck what, turnaround? You must have oh. been shitting. Oh, dude. But, but, but watching those two young, enormous D-men like, finish out that game, that's a, the fact they got those two guys in the future, and I, I, I just like watching Detroit play. I know I've talked about the, the uniforms and the history, but... That was a great win. And granted, it's Buffalo, but they've been playing a little better lately. And they just locked it down. And they scored early in that game. They made it 3-0, actually. But it was, it was a great effort for Detroit, who Newsy had a press conference similar to Torch's that we're going to talk about, I think, in terms of, like, we're here. We're here. We did it. Like, let's, let's now start playing like we, we know we, we believe that we should be here. So I'm, I'm happy for him. I didn't know him at all when we had him on for an interview. What a great guy. He's done a great job there. But watching Detroit close it out with those two young stud defensemen was impressive. Well, well so we had him on just after he'd won the Calder, Rookie of the Year, right? And I would say that uh, 
like his second year, his sophomore year, you know, there were some struggles. Yeah. He was getting all those top line matchups. But the one thing that he does have to his game is that 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 horse and that nastiness. We had the second intermission coming up, and I was watching him at his end playing physical, separating guys from the pucks, making plays. And then I was looking down at the other end, and I I don't want to be too critical of a guy as young as Owen Power. I just felt like He's there's, there's some stuff lacking there to his a game. A snarl. There's, there's there he's lacking the snarl, and I don't know if his top end offense is like offsets the the fact that he maybe doesn't need to be as aggressive and play as as hard as like a Marit Sider across the ice. And I know you have to play your game, but for a guy but who got hand, he doesn't even really have top end offense. Like that's what, top end off. Th- that's what I'm saying. And now they have Bo Byram. So it was like, what is Owen Power? And that's why I'm always like, why the fuck are you handing over these types of contracts? If you're telling me after watching the season that Owen Power's had, would you still sign him to that same fucking deal? No, I would sign him to a fucking bridge deal for two years at five million a year. I was talking to Bush about it too. And like, listen, this isn't a, a, an opportunity to shit on Owen Power. I think he's a great. I think he's a solid skater. I think that maybe he lacks a little bit of defensive awareness. He doesn't protect the house, obviously, as good as like a Marit Sider does, and doesn't have that that physical element to his game. I think that he's still a little bit of a step behind. There are a few plays like he's going to the corner, like as opposed to having stick on ice in the lane to the to the slot area to break up that pass on his check. It wasn't down, and. And it's not like he's being put on an island either. Like he's they they have Darlene. They have uh, is it Samuelson? Yeah. Who's their shutdown D man? So I guess just moving forward is like you know we talk about how great of a season that Reed Siders had in his third year coming out of I don't want to call it a sophomore slump. I would say that there was a little bit of regression based on expectations in his second year compared to what he'd done the first year. But Reed Siders right back on pace, exactly where where you would want him as a defenseman and. Going back to the contract negotiations, yeah, I think he ends up getting probably around that eight and a half, nine number for a, for an eight year deal. I don't think that he gets paid over nine. I think that that's probably silliness, in my opinion, based on the full the full package. But would you agree on my assessment of Owen, Owen Power? Maybe. So, yeah, I still think he's some- young enough where there's just so much room to grow and get that. But what's funny is Darlene kind of has that snarl. He does. Dude, Darlene went in and killed Edvinson at the end of that game when they were trying to make it 3-2. He actually has, like, he fucking lights people up. So it's like you almost wish you could pull, put a little bit of that into Owen Power. Still, though, you see his size and his skating and how young he is. Like, he could he could really grow into a dominant player. But, buddy, I, that's something I never had. And I didn't skate like him. And I wasn't that big. And I wasn't close to the same skill level. But I... It's hard to stick something like that into What do someone. you mean you, you weren't close to the same skill level as Owen Power? Yeah, buddy. He Wait, skates. Wait, you put like up the... 65 fucking points in the NHL as a no, power I, player. No, but, but I was. I'm, I'm, I'm plugging McDavid 100 assists. I had a lot of second assists. I, wasn't, <laughs> I, I see him as, as a powerful, dominant skater being that big. Victor, he could be like Victor Hedman. Victor Hedman doesn't have that much snarl. I think he has it when he needs it, but I just think that there's, with Power's age, it's like there's so much room. Like, dude, you see that guy's ceiling, and he's not even close to that. I agree with you, and what I'm saying is it's hard to put that into someone. Like, if you don't have that motherfucking attitude that, fuck you, like, I'm going to cross-check you in the in between the shoulder and the elbow and try to break your arm. Like you can't, you can't just create that in somebody. I don't know if he has that, if he ever will get that, but he's going to need to have that because that's what the great ones have. Like Hedman doesn't do it all the time, but he'll do it. Well, and when it's like you have Darlene as the, the top offensive defenseman yeah. and then Bo Byram is the other offensive defenseman you have now as a left-handed shot. Yes. So that's not going to be your role moving forward. So, but the problem is now you're paying them like it is, unless of course you become this unbelievable physical shutdown style defenseman. Because why the fuck would you be paying somebody eight fucking million dollars to just maybe doing what he's doing now? I agree on the upside, but looking at this Buffalo team who will miss playoffs for what the thirteenth season in a row, brutal. 
That, that's a yeah, broken. Yeah. That's a broken franchise, man. It's a and broken. They're, fa- it's like a they're gonna have to fr- make a big move. Like maybe you even look to trade someone. Like I, nothing's I, off the table for Buffalo. I would say a huge element going into next season on the fact that they can uh, maybe potentially make playoffs and fucking end this drought is the evolution of Owen Power, and I'm saying it right now. He ha- If he can fucking take that next step, now all of a sudden your top four is as good as anybody in the East, and you have some weapons up front. So I that, that, that's it. The reason I brought it up is the fact that they're being put to rest. They're going to miss playoffs. But that conversation of Marit Sider and them playing the other night was one we had in the broadcast. And I'm really just interested to see what Buffalo fans think of that. What are they seeing from this kid? Yeah, that's good. Uh, another kick around the league. Just quick question for you, Biz. The Vancouver Canucks are thirteen and fourteen in their last twenty-seven games. Is, is that something where it was bound to happen with their start? Is that something where there should be panic from Canucks fans and Demp goes out, and that's that's the biggest part of all this? But what are you thinking um, in terms of talk and what he's looking at right now? Okay, so uh, Lindholm had has been out. Right, they were dealing with that injury, and uh, he was struggling even beforehand. He was struggling when he came over. So then the question becomes: like, do we put him at, as a, a centerman, or is he going to end up playing the wing? Because they are a little bit thin on the wings from 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 a high end yeah. talent perspective, especially when you go into playoffs. Now, I think um, their success is going to de- playoff time is going to depend on who they match up against. I think that if they get Nashville, that is a dream case scenario for me, based on anybody else they would draw in the West. Obviously, L.A. being the other team, but I think that right now... L.A. drummed them the other night. I think that L.A. would would beat them in a series. Uh, getting Demko back healthy is, is a key. Uh, they had healthy scratch the door off, so maybe some guys on the back end not playing as well as they were when they originally came over or to start the year. Now, I hate to do this, and I don't even know if he's on the call. Is Pasha here? He did oh, yeah. talk about how... Their analytic numbers and the pace in which they were scoring at and producing was unsustainable. So why don't we call in our Vancouver correspondent to maybe have a few words on what he's seeing? And living before there. he hops on, Biz, before yep. he hops on, sorry, Pasha, I was traded in the middle of a season, a season in which the team who traded me won the Stanley Cup, and and you've still had a worse year than I did that year. <laughs> Like so, go ahead, go ahead. Pavel Zaka, by the way. Oh, oh that my argument. God! There's another that one. Guy, well, well, uh, there's that another guy. One. Let's get to Zaka a after. Hockey player, Let's Pasha. get to Zaka. To sorry, Zaka sorry. comments. Yeah, what on do that. you What do you want to talk about here? Zaka or the Canucks? Let's talk Canucks here. Okay, listen. I'm going to talk about it in a positive light. They've had a hell of a year. They're a lot better than I thought. They're a hell of a team. Um, like we like Whit said, I think this was expected. Like their their start was just like it wasn't sustainable. I agree with you, Witt, I think or Biz. I think if they play Nashville, they beat them handily. I think if they play LA, it's going to be a coin flip in Game 7. And I think if they play Vegas, they get squashed in five or six games. So I think, like you said, it totally depends on who they face. But you, but you, like you always do, you like to go to the analytics, and you were telling me about this thing, and there were their goals expected were they were so PDO far above. or something. Yeah, what the PDO, fuck are we yeah. talking about? Yeah, it was astronomically high. It's still high, like unsustainably high. But listen, it went on a lot longer than I thought. But it's still like historically high right now. Can you explain what that is to the to the listeners? Uh, it's basically uh, on ice shooting percentage combined with save percentage. So you know all the shots are going in and you're getting big saves. And obviously, like that's not dumb luck. Like a lot, of, like you have to be good to you know be getting saves and you know good shots or whatever. So it's I'm not taking away anything away from them. But it was unsustainably high at the start of the year. It's kind of come back down a little bit more towards earth. But listen, this is a good hockey team. But I mean, listen, last night I watched the Devils play Nashville, and then afterwards I watched Dallas and Colorado. It's completely embarrassing. Like, the Devils are not even on the same planet, like barely the same league as these big boys in the West. Like Dallas and Colorado, these guys are playing a different sport. And I'm not saying the Canucks are on the Devils level, but the Canucks are not on the same level as the Dallases, the Colorados, the Vegas, like even, you know, Edmonton's. That's big boy legit hockey to me. Like the cups coming out of one of those couple, you know, teams in the West, the Canucks are just not on that same level, in my opinion. So you look okay. at the Oilers as heads and shoulders above the Canucks, because I personally no, I would, do. 
I would say Colorado, Dallas, Vegas is like the one A, like top tier of the West. I'd put the Oilers a little bit below them, and the Canucks a little bit below that. Okay, well we don't we don't bring you on for your reasonable takes. We bring you on for your shitty ones so we can abuse you. <laughs> now you've been all over Zaka since he was for a, a years New for New but Jersey. Guys, Zaka, New Jersey. Zaka I, is a bum. I I've oh, Pasha whoa, Pasha Pasha Zaka is a bum. Pasha. It, he, Zaka he's is a an bum. unreal player, dude. I oh, hate to break it to you. With David Pasternak. I'd get 50 points running shotgun okay, with David Okay, so this is, where, this is what I said in the group chat uh, for all you fans listening. It's the organization in which he was in, not the player. He's moved on to Boston, and he's flourished. You were selling me this nonsense of how he flourish? wasn't a good devil. He's a, he, has a hot, he has a hot month and a cold month. It's like that all season long. Okay, he had a great march. Good for him. Let's, see, let's watch him get I would cold say here. that the, one of the biggest question marks this season was for the Boston Bruins, who won the President's Trophy last year after losing their two first centers, how they were going to respond. I think Zaka and Charlie Coyle have flourished. I am perplexed at how well both of them have played for a sustainable amount of time this season in order to like put them in another race for offensively, a trophy. Offensively, offensively, too. offensively too. Like Charlie Coyle is what at close to sixty points right now. Career is high Charlie goals. Coyle's, Charlie Coyle is a hell of a player. I like Charlie Coyle a lot. Zaka is a bum. He's not a number one or number two center on a cup team, and you'll see that once the playoffs start. Holy. And you know what? He blew, you still he think Hall is March. a better player than Zaka? He's such, a, he's such a hot and cold player. He blew his load in March, so he's going to have a cold April now. He should have saved her for the playoffs. Do you, uh, you said that Halla is a better player than Zaka. Do you still stand by your word? I said it was a really good trade for both teams. I think it benefited both teams. Now, obviously, the Devils have been a train wreck, and every player suffered for that. So, sure, Zaka's had a better offensive year. But like I said, Hall came in last year. He had a hell of a first round, and he pushed his team farther than Zaka pushed his team. All right. That's Congrats all I want to hear. Sharon Govich is 30 goals to a push. Zaka yeah. is a bum. Sharon says. Govich, well, buddy. Well, we're going to yeah, be interviewing Sharon Charlie Govich, Coyle. Sharon Govich isn't getting power play one time in New Jersey. There's just no room for that. And you know what? I'm happy to see him succeed, but he wasn't getting that usage in Jersey. So he's not a power play merchant is what you're saying. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, that's it for Pasha. Thank you, Pasha. (laughs) That's it. Thank you. Check out Pasha's uh, masterful (laughs) editing and directing Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Sandbagger. We're we're in another marathon episode here. We still haven't gotten to our second guest, uh, Tim Conley. Not sure if you heard he's friends of Merle's, but real quick, uh, very early with Owen Powell's career, man. Don't quit on him. Victor Head was a great example with Early, remember there was a lot of trade talk about him early on in his career. That's what Boosh said too the other night. He goes, "Yeah, look at look at look at Hedman." He said the yeah. first four years he wasn't yeah. he didn't exactly take that step. So yeah. hey, we're here to create conversation and have, you know, have the dialogue. And interested to hear what you Sabres fans have to say in my mentions. Uh, UPL looked like he got a fire under his ass in Buffalo as well. I don't know if it's the presence of Devin Levi or what, but he's been playing great late. Uh, and lastly, uh, hashtag never forget the day that Winnipeg went to Atlanta. Wet. That was a that was a tough day. That's what you said earlier. You probably didn't even know. Fucking popcorn. <laughs> I put what, what did I say? You, you said well, the day Winnipeg went to Atlanta. You referenced. Oh, I'm, I meant. I meant. I meant Phoenix. I. I I'm. I, I. I'm pathetic. Yeah, He's been carrying all, this pod already. Right? Sorry. We all, uh, all right. Look, Tim Conley. Enjoy. Before we continue, guys, I need to talk to you about G4. Kick off Masters Week right and head over to G4. It's the premier destination for all things golf, and their new tourney capsule is jam-packed with shoes in seasonal shades of green. That's seriously a style for any type player. Everything from the classic Galavantar G-Lock with replaceable soft spikes to the sleek new Galavantor is available, and all of them kick ass in the comfort department. Your feet, for real, will feel like they're getting a massage. Rock yours at all the big tournaments this year, and we'll see you out there. Check out G4's 2024 tourney collection, and don't forget to visit g4.com slash chicklets. That's G-F-O-R-E dot com slash chicklets for 10% off your first order. The soles of these shoes are amazing. They have a little bump cushions massaging type style in the sole. You can also get them without them. So go on right now to g4.com. Check it all out. All right, everyone, it's time for our next guest, a veteran of 697 NHL games. Let's just give him 700 for the benefit of the doubt. (laughs) The only reason I ever played any sort of hockey, my old teammate, my old line mate, my old roommate, 
he, he he's uh he's tough to find. You don't get much media coverage out of Not him. Not an interview guy. But we got him here in Toronto, former Maple Leaf, former Buffalo Saber, former New York Islander. Tim Conley, welcome Let's to Slam Kick. Let's go, Tim. Let's go, Let's go boys. Hey. I, thought, hey. Hey, I thought it was Army. all Ray. He just got in shape. I'm like, oh, fuck, career. I'm like, you really hit up that shirt and gym. I went Come to Gary Roberts for eight months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You I don't think great. I would have survived Gary Roberts. No, no way. The no enigma chance. of Timmy Connolly. Wow, it's amazing to have you here, buddy. It's great to be here. I played with you, of course. Yeah, yeah. I knew about you already from the merman talking oh, about yeah. you. Yeah, when you guys are playing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, where have you been? Where the <laughs> fuck have you been? There's been a lot of questions about that. I just been I just you and Kyle low. Wellwood. That's the most asked I've been, about leads. I've been waiting, waiting for my come out party. Now I'm here. I'm here with the big boys right now, the big timers, you guys, all four of you guys. I love it. How about well, that intro by Murr? Way to go, yeah. Murr. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, just that thrown God, at me. My. But what we do in Spin Check is Conley is not a social media guy. I don't even think he, I think he had burner MySpace accounts. was the last thing he ever had. I got TikTok. Got burner, Does that so, count? You're a TikTok guy? I don't use, I don't like you post scroll. stuff. You I scroll. just like look for like recipes for like salmon and stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't put videos out guys there. You don't TikTok get sucked part. in the algorithm? No. Well, yeah, the algorithm gets it's me just, what I'm watching. Bang, but, bang. I mean, I don't know. I don't have Facebook. I don't have any Instagram. I, I didn't even know what podcasts were till a year ago. <laughs> okay. like right. a so we used to enigma. call this guy Encino Man on our team, Tim Fisher. You remember him? Yeah. Iraqi war vet. Yeah. Uh, I think I might be the Encino man. Like, I just yeah. woke up and seen the movie. Brandon yeah. Fraser, yeah. He goes to sleep and then yeah. wakes up. He's like, What is this technology? What is this? Yeah, I think that's me. Because I didn't know what a podcast was a year ago. Yeah. So to, go, yeah. So, so to go back to that, what we do on Chicklets is we always start at the beginning yeah. with your careers. You are a guy that I always bring up with, with parents or with players. Youth hockey, you play two years up, three years up. It didn't matter. Wit, he won the Quebec Pee Wee tournament before you yeah. did. But I was no, told, that was, all, I, I was told that was all Freddie Meyer playing the entire game, running running that it team. It was. <laughs> you won MVP. Wit, they, Merle was telling me that you keep bringing up the Pee Wee. I Quebec brought it up no less than 400 times. Well, I mean, that's like what? Do you have any other? That's the only championship I have. That is the only championship. Yeah, so I have. yes, we live Be off of that. A, we got a couple it. bean pots and maybe an, maybe an ISL title at Fair Academy <laughs> oh, and God. the Quebec Pee Wee World the Championship. The Quebec Pee Wee World Championship. <laughs> yeah, but you were after me, Wit. We were the first American team. I know, I know. But and You're, you actually were lucky enough that that's when it was still on ESPN two. Yes, my they year did. we yep. won. It was the first year that ESPN two stopped broadcasting. So I remember because you're two years old and me watching. Holy shit, Syracuse Stars! And you were dominant then. You were always a stud player. That tournament is, it's the best childhood memory like Easily. ever for me. No way. So yeah, Easily. yeah, unbelievable. I mean, you're playing against you're playing teams all over the world. You got a full pack stadium, and I was fortunate enough to play in it three years. I played with Merle the Mutt the first first year we got into it. I don't know how or seventy. So you were years. nine years old playing against twelve <laughs> no. year olds. You must. It's tw yes. that's your twelve. Is it twelve? Or your thir your your thir you're turning thirteen? I don't that know year. how many. So 12. it's like ten. No, yeah. I played. Yeah. 10, 11, 12. It's in yeah. February, so some kids have turned 13. So correct. We, we, yes, we tried correct. to get, he, we, he played 78s. We tried to get in oh, a 78. Oh, we didn't get in 78s. We didn't get in a 78. We did we not got get in, in the that next year, year yeah. as 79. Yeah. Okay. And then we did so well. We lost in the finals, Toronto Red Wings. So then the 80s got in, and then the 81s, they had the best team. JD Forrest, uh, Freddie Meyer, who you just said, Drew Bucktooth, Gary Bronick, the five of them. 25 minute games or whatever they were, they played 24 minutes of the game. Oh, so no, we were the, the five. We were the yeah. Syracuse yeah. Stars, yeah. Yes. but we had, you know, Freddie Meyer lived with me. Yeah, yeah. From oh, New Hampshire. Yeah. He's telling oh, me yeah, yeah, yeah. I ran into him. He's yeah, like, yeah, he's hockey he's player. Yeah, yeah. No, he's what? like, I showed up to the team, and all of a sudden, like, kids that have been on the team just aren't playing. Parents are like, who is this kid? From oh, yeah. He, we went, he wasn't allowed to come off the ice. They're like, he just moved here. What's his address? Timmy, what's my, my address? <laughs> there you go. Correct. Yeah, those those are that was that was awesome. So, that tournament's unbelievable. So you played three years ahead. They were explaining to me you were like a phenom growing up. Like maybe at some points even being talked about, kind of like a Connor McDavid. Was it your like were you bigger than the other kids, or you just had like the silkiest hands? Like what was it that made you so advanced at such a young age? Brain. Brain has something to do with it, I think, but I think it was uh, yeah, and I just love the game, and that's all I did. Um, backyard rink, backyard rink. Yeah, you had the backyard rink. Had going. a real net. 
where all of us had the oh, plastic net. The that somehow I had but a then, real yeah, net. Yeah, we were going out there, and then it was just real pucks, too. A lot of kids are out there playing tennis balls, and that's fun. But I just loved it. I loved all of it. I think I think I did peak at around 12 or 13. <laughs> I mean, I, Merle, when did I? I didn't get better after that. <laughs> you were that good then? You were an NHL no, at 13, no. and you stayed there. I mean, I think my trajectory was like were this. You and then just kind of were you just good? No. You didn't have just armpit good. hair, nothing? No, I, but then I got just, in with the in Syracuse, and it was. It was all older kids at Merle's age. Great it's coach, like, Don Kernan. Great, Don Kernan, yeah, it, and he was all offense everything based on offense we didn't i didn't even know about defense till like my fifth year in the nhl <laughs> like, I literally like i didn't know what to do and then i learned it and i'm like shoot i gotta play this too oh no i'm like all right so started playing that tried to make that part of my game but uh, i mean youth hockey was i don't know it was like, easy yeah easy. it was fun it was so but that fun. made it fun i don't yeah. know i don't i don't know i wasn't physically more gifted than the other kids your like, hands were yeah, your hands were hands, amazing. Maybe that was a. Your I brain, mean, we, we got to bring up brain probably hand. one of the brain si- army. I think you've got some hockey there. IQ yeah. guy. Well, probably one of the sickest YouTube highlight like clips on the uh, on the internet for this guy. I mean, it's like five minutes. You know of why? Toe drags I don't, and just embarrassing demon. I think just people don't realize how good you were. Yeah, that's I don't why remember. when they see that, then they're like, "Holy shit, who is that?" Tim Colley, he played for the Leafs for He doesn't a even have a cell phone yet. It's <laughs> 2024. But yeah. I think it's just like no respect. You're like the Rodney Dangerfield of I'll the NHL. Me. I don't, it's not why I played. I, when I played until I did, it was because I loved it. That's what I always wanted to do. I always wanted to be a hockey player, play hockey, grew up. That's what I want to do before school, after school, play hockey. I'm sure you guys loved yeah. playing hockey and want to be professional hockey players. That was a question. I want to get that out of the way with you guys right away. <laughs> so we all wanted to be hockey players when we grew up. Everybody here definitely did. And then there's all the players that play, then become coaches and coach for a long time. You take like Lindy Ruff, who coached me forever in Buffalo. He's still going. Well, I know. Crazy. <laughs> well, I don't know. It must have adapted. <laughs> but what do you think he considers himself? A coach or a player oh, first? I know. So I was I was thinking about this with you guys. Yeah. You guys. You guys have built something amazing here with the chicklets. Do you consider yourself a hockey player or a podcaster? So we're known or I know what you're known we're for. We're known for this. But this doesn't happen without being a player. Correct. I know it gets so, you to and work. I've also played for a majority of my life compared to like my working life, quote unquote. Yeah. Now, Lindy, but we're approaching. Lindy Ruff <laughs> yeah. might be surpassing that. Yeah, I think he was. I think he would consider I, himself. I just a brought player. him up as like no, whatever an example. example of that of yeah. like a situation where guys play hockey. They're hockey players, but then they go on that leads them into another life. Eventually, we can look back on your life and be like. My, was, was a media a hockey guy player? Was like a hockey yeah, I don't want to consider media. It's like this my business guy. Like, what? was it like? I yeah, but what? I think, but I think you look back when you look back as you're older, at least my age right now. Who knows? In 20 years, you think to like your childhood, and those are like the best memories, and that's all hockey. So, like for me, it'll be the beginning of growing up and just what you love. Then that'll be what I always think. Like I'm a hockey so you, player. You're a hockey player. Yeah, like just because of this from like, from eight to. When I was drafted, it was like all I thought about. Like you so said, so this is more of a hobby too. Then. Yeah, hundred percent. You yeah. know, but we're still around the game, TC. That's yeah, I know you're is. still involved in it. Yeah, that's a the lot. best part. Like, I didn't realize this is a player, but like, just how many jobs hockey provides from parking lot attendants, ushers at the rink for every city to media all over the place that cover every team to trainers, tra- doctors. Oh, it's just unbelievable. And so for us now, post career for us knuckleheads, like like we love hockey so much like you that we're i think we're all so thankful that we're just around it still right yeah i and that's what i'm saying like eventually like say you do this for another 20 years or this develops into something else would this be like it'll always be about hockey yeah but will you be like first and foremost a hockey player or will you be like hey i was podcaster influence people in this way Inf- i like influencer influencer i was always more of a gambler <laughs> than i was a hockey wait till player i get so my lips done and my boob job buddy fucking, you'll see some influence <laughs> going on seeing that biz. no more no, no, no. the mutt's a gambler he's yeah. a gambler and he gets yeah. to talk about changed. gambling now oh my that's like, god does he ever that's that's what really made me think it was like i don't know if merle he was a hockey player but 
Was he though? He's uh, a no, I he was all gambling. Like, I mean, we're gambling. <laughs> No. He played hockey to supplement <laughs> yeah. his gambling. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I used to deal in, in tier two junior before he went to the OHL. I used to deal blackjack in the dressing room, like after oh, warm God. ups in the intermissions. <laughs> no. the periods. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, we that were that. Did you have the cock doing it for fans? Yeah. That's a true story. In the locker yeah. room. In our uh, locker room. I get a couple get quarters, a couple dollars going in there. <laughs> um, so, so hockey was fun in minor hockey. When did it start feeling like a job where you're like, actually, you needed to start learning how to play defense and it got more serious? And When Lindy Ruff got a hold of him. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I was. Well, don't came, skip I, ahead too far because he, he yeah, was drafted fifth overall, Erie Otters, and he went fifth overall, New York Islanders. And back then, play at 18 years old. He played in the NHL at 18 years old. Common, it man. was nobody did it. Joe Thornton had done it for the first time, and then him. And that team was brutal. That Islander team was brutal. Who was your coach? But oh, yeah. Butch Gorey. Butchie. Oh, <laughs> Butch Gorey. Butchie Gorey. I need to hear 16 Butch Gorey oh, stories man. right He now. used to go on the road with just a toothbrush. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Turn it. Yep. <laughs> no, he was he was he was great to me. He like he was he was real great to me. But I mean that's what this they used to say about him. These are no hearsay, but you know, he'd say they'd go on a you know 14 day road trip and he'd just bring a toothbrush and you know turn his shirt inside out. <laughs> Old that was school. that was when That's he when school. he played, not not as a coach. Oh, okay, so coach. Yeah. I think as as uh, and this is probably a joke too, but as part of his deal as signing as a coach for the Islanders, that uh, he had the the team had to buy him like ten new suits so that he you know he was stocked up. <laughs> they were from the Cup Run teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Biz but I mean, he's a consummate legend too. To come after yeah. Butch with, but that team was fun too what? because you guys were uh, bankrupt. They were brutal. They did. They were the only team that didn't charter, so they no, would stay over. commercial. Then no, we were the shit. last team. Yeah, last team. Ninety nine. We uh, we didn't charter. We chartered a few trips. Like if it was back to back on a visiting team, like we'd go somewhere and then have to play the next day. We'd charter there, but we never chartered other than that. And I was the rookie. I always got the middle I was seat. eighteen middle seat. <laughs> yeah, shaving cream. I had hair then. <laughs> shaving cream every time. Fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so well, you, but how would they, like, how would they the do opposite. that? How would they shave cream you? Like how they would, would just do it. They just, they just, I'd be sitting there. You fall asleep. Yeah, fall asleep. They just put it in my hair. <laughs> but then I look over. There'd be another rookie. He's got shaving cream in his hair too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, you go, you show up. You're like, all right, we're flying out to LA. It's like, oh, I look at my ticket. Oh, I got an aisle seat. This is great. No, I think I wasn't getting an aisle seat. Whoever, what other veteran had a middle seat was coming over looking for oh, me. They're yeah. like, give me that. I'm like, there you go. I'm like, great. Not a signed seat. Yeah, there, there was, and I'll, I'll tell you what, that was like the tail end of that culture. Drinking. You know what that culture was? Yeah. Drinking. So we stayed out. I mean, we stayed over every, oh my God. everywhere. Oh, so we play Friday. That's what ruined you. Play Friday at home, Saturday away in Toronto. Well, we're not flying back. At, oh. There's no flight back to Long Island, so we stay over. We never practice the next day, not one time. F no way. Ever. <laughs> oh, my God. Not oh. one Flashing single time. Flashing green lights so every So Saturday city. night on the road, you're staying over. You're getting, I mean, you got the earliest flight, the 6 a.m. flight. There was some, Oh no. I witnessed some guys getting on the bus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> How many rooms did just, you have to run just, to the wake-ups? Oh, yeah. There was a... Hey, uh, you're rooming with this guy tonight. Go go in that room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever that means. What a, what a, <laughs> a, a different adventure every time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are the vets on that island? Oh, and there's there's some there are some legends on that. You look at some of those guys. It was, I mean, R.I.P. Gino Ojek. Oh, oh wow. God. Oh, For wow. tough guy. Like I'm just thinking of uh, thinking of tough Richie guys Pilon. too. Richie Pilon. Richie Pilon. Eric Cairn. Steve Webb. Webby. Webby, uh, Webby pushed me guys. in the pool in Vegas. <laughs> Remember when we saw him? Uh, he was a great the Czech guy. guy. Who was a Czech? Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. He's a uh, Polish. Polish, Polish. The Polish was Paul Prince. Was Paulie there then? No, he got traded out right away. Okay. They unloaded everybody and then just went to the bottom, yeah. rebuild. Well, looking back, do you almost think like... I don't think I was mature enough. Yeah, like you maybe... maybe you, you weren't ready like off ice to be in the NHL then. Agreed. Like you look at what... What did I mean? Merle's got his claim to fame. Crosby's roommate. They didn't just put him off on his own, right? No, he lived He's at living Mario's Mario. house. Yeah, yeah, that all. Yeah, changed. in my own apartment. He, he, he Here you go. I'm 18, I come down and visit and him I'm, in college. Then they sent me in with the, some of these maniacs. In like New Ooh. York. Yeah, you're yeah. going for dinner every night. 
<laughs> right to the bar. Yeah. No. Liquid you calories. Confirm or deny? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I don't know. I just I go to the restaurant by myself a lot, and unless a guy invited, I was I was eighteen. I was too nervous to like, hey guys, what are you guys doing? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was yeah. different. It was real. Especially you weren't like too, it was a like, different culture. It wasn't. Talk. Yeah, it wasn't like uh, older guys like welcome the younger no. guys. It was like shut up, Rook. Yeah. They didn't want yeah. to lose their job they, to you. It was, yeah, it was there was a lot of that. Too, I remember yeah. that. But I mean, who, I, I had a blast. I loved it. Who, who did you befriend the most? Like who who took you under their wing as far as the like the vets that would do it? Butchie. <laughs> you well, coach. Butchie, Butchie. The one guy I remember, Tony Herkus or something. He was your roommate. He taught you. A few yeah, he was, tricks, he was he was he was good. T Tony Herkus was good. Um, he took us out. He was like more of a like family guy, just whatever. He'd take some of the young guys. Like a father but we, figure. But we had we had like seven guys that were 21 or under. So it was more like not older guys taking us under the wing. It was like us just hanging Trial out. Trial by fire. Yeah. <laughs> we no, you were part of some of that activity. <laughs> but I mean, it was odd. It was fun. We our just team wasn't it was being restructured. It was all young guys and we stunk. We you got like no 19 fans? wins. Yeah. No nothing. fans. Yeah. It wasn't. But I, I mean, I was, I was so happy to be there and not be back in juniors riding the bus doing that. And I just want to play in the NHL. So yeah, I loved it. Is this is the 99 draft. Yeah. In Boston. Oh yeah. Oh, baby. Morales, Morales fell down in the draft because he was out. Yeah. All he took me out two nights before <laughs> he was going top five and didn't matter. I dropped. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean you dropped? <laughs> I was ranked twenty third overall in the pre, in the final scouting. Went what thirty? Fifty one. Oh, fifty one. Oh, I was way. But up. you won like six parlays that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Went yeah. to the right team. Yeah, yeah. Knocked, knocked out a few, out a few drinkers. scouts and uh, and hit a bunch of his parlays. <laughs> Hell of a weekend. Yeah. Good weekend. And then from there, you got traded up to Buffalo, and that's where like, you really took off. Those yeah. teams were amazing. Oh. Talk to us about some of those guys you played with. And, Sorry, and quick. How many drugs. years till you got? How many years you play on the aisle? Two years, 18, okay. 19. So kind of shocked to get the trade call, no? Yeah, I got the trade call. I was at my sister's, my little sister's high school graduation, literally right at their graduation. And my one little sister was going to Hofstra, which is Long Island, five minutes from where I lived. Oh. So I, I got the call from Millbury. He's like, uh, yeah, just calling to say you got traded uh, in a deal with Taylor Pyatt. Uh, for Michael Pekka. Like, okay. It's like, that was it. That was a call. <laughs> Hang up. I'm Bye, like, Mike. I'm like, wow, here we go. Yeah, I didn't, nothing. <laughs> Millberry. Um, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, anyways. But you had to be happy. You were happy to go to Buffalo. Your dad was from Buffalo. All yeah. your cousins, your aunts, your uncles from there. It's an hour and a half drive from your family home. And, I mean, they weren't good. You guys were, again, it wasn't like a team, but it was all young guys, and you guys all started coming up together. You added Briere and Drury, and, and those runs you guys went on was just, you guys changed the game there for a while. Yeah, that was right after the, I mean, I was there before the original, when was that lockout? I forget what year that oh, was. 405. Yeah. Um, I think we got Briere right before that too, maybe, or Drury. I'm not even sure exactly how that And Briere hadn't that. popped off yet, right? No, he was like up and down and, Arizona and um I mean it was a, a great a great trade I think right after the lockout is when we just became this fast-paced offensive team yeah, that's like yeah. the league was changing because the rules were changing there was yeah. like no there wasn't as much clutching and grabbing there was like they were calling everything any stick any so it was hands. like a, yeah anything like on the hands like stick had to be down on the ice anything like anything lateral with your hands they called it so it, like it took a lot it like it took a while for teams to adjust to that, but I think we adjusted you like guys were more fast. quickly. Yeah, fast. fast. Like you had a Finneganov, like you had the Vanek, yeah. Briere, Drury. Drury, not so fast, but uh, who else? Yeah, Derek you guys were Roy. Call, they were calling a ton of penalties Roy, too. Palmanville. Roy Palmville. Roy Hacked could skate. Ryan Miller and Net. Miller, yeah. Campbell, Brian Campbell. That was the launch of that Sabres teams that were there yeah. just. It was, uh, it was exciting. Uh, yeah, it was. They were exciting teams. It was the opposite of the way that I feel like the first few years with Lindy, we played all defensive. And I don't know if that was because the, he had Hashik there. Hashik got traded the summer I got, he got traded to 
out the summer I got traded there. So I missed him by year. But at that point in time, they're just winning games. 2-1, 1-0. One, one, you got yeah, passion. Yeah. He's, and the old NHL. Yeah, and the clutch of crap. So you play that system, play yeah. it, and hey, it works. Do it. And then we just made the adjustment, I think, before some teams. Unfortunately, we didn't win a cup. But Oh, well, that one run. I mean, game seven to Carolina, you were out injured. I, I think Brian Campbell was the only defenseman that was still playing. Yeah, right? all our top 5D were oh, out. We had... Oh. We had uh, I think Pacher got Pacher, called up. Pacher <laughs> played his first <laughs> NHL first game. game but, uh, I think it was game seven against oh Carolina. God. Yeah, it's fucked. Overtime game. Yeah, here you <laughs> go, kid. Yep. No, game he did. Seven. I was Good watching because I knew him from Sask. Yeah. And I, I knew he hadn't guy. played an NHL game yet. And I was at home watching the game in the summer, like by my pool in my backyard. And I was like, holy shit, Pacher's in this game. Yeah. yeah. Conference final. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, seven. oh my God. Game seven. Went to OT too. Yeah. yeah. Did it? Yeah. No oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. So I it was close. That would have been the year if we could have got one. That would have been definitely been the year. The next year, I just, Ottawa, I think, was a little bit better than us. That's when Ottawa they were, they came were real on. good. Both, that was both they, years. That was Ottawa's when they real. had uh, Ray Emery and they went on that run. Yeah, Spezza. Oh, they had yeah. Alfred, so they were, I mean, there's a, yeah. They were kind yeah, of they, the bad boys. They had McGratton on the team at the time. Yeah. Yeah, they just beat the shit off. Yeah, Neil. there was some like Neil, those. Yeah. They had some, there was some big brawls with, uh, that's when you the guys Sabres, fought them. There yeah. was like, yeah, Marty. Petey fought the Petey goalie. Petey fought Emery. <laughs> yeah. Peter Sander, Peters fought Emery, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I, what, what happened there? Was that was that the, I think shit. who somebody ran over, I think, Drury or something. So then Lindy sent out, he's like, go get <laughs> Spezza, Alfredson. I think it was like Adam Mayer. Who else is Andrew Peters? He just, it was in Buffalo. So we had last change. They sent out the first line. Lindy sent out the. The, the meat, goon the squad, meats, the, the, goal, the boys, and they, the, the face off goes, and they just go like this. And I'm a hawk, and just like <laughs> it was on. Then yeah, Marty Biron fought Emery, and then Petey jumped in and fought him, and was, just <laughs> melee. Yeah, was, I, I mean that fan base is just wild. That must have been they just got some the best fun, fun right drinking there. times, and, oh, yeah. and just at the height of it all. Merle used to come to those some of those some well, of those games. Well, you know, I well, I used to go out and skate with you guys too before my training camps. And you gotta yeah. tell that story with Drury in oh. the training camps. Merle used he used to skate. We used to Merle used to come in for a few weeks before camp, you know, just like get, the captain's get, practice type thing. Yeah, we would we would have just our own skates, yeah. whatever. And then we we wouldn't have enough guys to have like a full scrimmage, so I bring out like a few bartender buddies, beer leaguers come out, and I bring Merle out. <laughs> Merle's Merle's playing in the scrimmage, and Jury comes off the ice. He goes, "Who's that merman guy you brought out here? Man, he's all over me. He's, he's stick on stick. Who is this beer leaguer?" I'm like, "He he plays." <laughs> 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 he's a pro. He player. thought maybe he, he was one of like my own next week. Jury's you know, like, like, "God, am I slowing down here? This yeah. fucking bartender Merle's from across just the all street. over back check. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, you know, where else is a bartender yeah. as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, those, yeah. those skates were always Monday through Friday. I, we never, I never saw a Friday skate nope. in my life. No, yeah. Yeah. Merle, Merle took the Friday <laughs> option. They used to have Thursday party in the square at Buffalo at bands and stuff. Merle <laughs> took his option. Yeah. Merle, he probably thought you were beer leader because he had those big size 14 Nikes with tongues flopping around everywhere. He's like, who is this guy? Yeah, I did look like a beer leader. That, that was always fun to go out there. And then I would always come up for the playoffs too. Even when I was, I think I was in Russia the one year, they're in one of their playoff runs. And that was that was a blast. Like those people are partying for those playoff games, and I was right in the mix. But then I'm staying at his house, so I'm coming back there after our parties till four in the morning. He's waking up like what? The He's fuck? got an afternoon game. I yeah. was a part of one of those <laughs> yeah. when you were in Toronto. I came to the bar. We were there. We were going for dinner or something. I come to the bar and it's like Murr and Joey Tanute at the yeah. bar. I'm like, what's up? I'm like, no way. <laughs> we're like, we're here in TC, man. Yeah. In the family lounge, yeah. not the wives' lounge. <laughs> yeah. uh, what was your, your relationship like with Lindy and like what'd you make him of a, as a coach? Like, you know, he's a good coach. My, our, it was, it's weird. I feel like the relationships now with players and coaches is more delicate. Like, you look at like players now. With even with GMs, like guys, I mean, the upper echelon guys like Ovechkin, Krasi, they can sit there and talk with the coach and GM and they can say whatever they want, obviously, and they earn that right to do it. But uh, like mid level guys or whatever, I don't know. You couldn't, I, one of my regrets as a player was 
why didn't I, why didn't I advocate to get Merle on my team? I played with him for 10 years. We together, we dominated in youth hockey. And that's not like a cocky statement as we did. Merle was, Merle was the best player on the ice. And we had that chemistry where we knew where each other going to be. We do whatever we knew how things worked. And I kind of wish that I would have like spoke up a little bit more to like, I mentioned it one time to Darcy Regeer, like, you got to look, take a look at this Matt Murley guy. Like, get him. Like, I played. Okay. And me and him have Matt. But he didn't really, but it didn't really, I didn't like, push it. Buddy? And I didn't really, <laughs> <laughs> this is how he did. I didn't really force it. He's like, yeah, I know who he is. Like, what do you mean I'm going to Toronto? <laughs> he's like, yeah, you know, he's like, yeah, I know who he is. I played in a poker game. He saw last week. <laughs> yeah. Is that the guy who deals blackjack in the locker room? Oh, I like, yeah. yeah, I don't want him around here. Yeah, yeah I think they were just like, man, yeah. we'll research his background. We're going to not have him. <laughs> you really tried to push for the murder, yeah, though. Crazy. Right? Not hard enough is my regret. Like, I, I made mention of it and said about it, but I didn't, like, follow through on it. And Don Kernan, our coach that coached us for 10 years growing up, would always say that. He's like, you got to, you guys got to get on the same team. Yeah. Get it. Because I'd, I'd still talk to him after games. and be like, yeah, what would you see in the power play? This was like, get Merle up there. Like, Yeah, and I didn't want to ever sign there, though, because they had all those forwards. We just listed off yeah. those 12 yeah, forwards he would say that, that were all first-line guys. Like, where am I going to fit in? But I should. So he probably work. turned down the contract. <laughs> yeah, he there might have been an offer. Oh, it, no. it was Judd turned it down. <laughs> yeah, never gave Judd it to me. Sent you to KHL. <laughs> and we have the same. Why didn't our agent figure this out? We could have seen the second coming of the Sedins. That's what I was. They're sharing her brain That's out a, there. We were all the same draft, and we and we had the same agents. So we used to we used to be so cocky. We'd be like, tell those two fucking eight, tell those two Swedes, we'll go them two on two. We'll get oh we'll get goalies ahead. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. You would. I, I never. I never said that. In the <laughs> we would no, you guys would have. Collie's Collie's just throwing them under the bus. You guys would have had them the first couple of years, maybe. Yeah. We That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Off ice for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no doubt. So obviously, like you dealt with like concussions, right? And and that was the time when you get hit, you get a concussion, all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, you're fine to play, right?" Like you were probably playing a couple times when you necessarily weren't ready to. Yeah, possibly. I don't. They, or did you was, feel good coming back? I had two. The first one. You know, I was out, I was, both of them were out almost a year. The second one, but they didn't have a lot of information back then. Like yeah. you're saying, like guys would play, get hit again, get hit again. That happened to a couple of guys I know. But they were like overly cautious with me and like kept me out. Oh, and The okay. second time, it ended up, I like I was passing all the neuropsych tests. I'm like, why is this happening? And I got a MRI of my neck and I had a, protruding disc hitting a nerve that was giving me headaches so like as soon as they burned off the nerve tips like within two minutes after they did it normal mm, yes ready to go wow so i you know maybe missed a year for that oh but, oh no just waiting like, like yeah all these could different have done that earlier yeah. missed, like, were you nervous to do the surgery to start there was no one? surgery no they didn't know so what we're searching for all kinds of reasons why the headaches keep coming back and I'm working out, it's not affecting it. And then they start getting worse and worse and worse. So I go to this program at the University of Buffalo and the first uh, neuroscientist I see, he's like, have you had your neck MRI? I'm like, no. He's like, we need to do that right away because we're finding that it's mostly neck trauma that is causing the headaches. And you know, you get hit, your head's whatever, smacks back, comes back. So I had a disc that was out of place, just hitting a nerve. As soon as they numbed the nerves the first time, right away, no headaches, good to go. And then that wears off. They're like, headaches? Yes. So that's it. They burn the nerve tips. Oh, All they do good. a test at first. To numb it's a, you're it. awake. You don't have surgery. They just do it under an x-ray. Yeah, they right. test it to see like, hey, if that's maybe it it's, you're just, your disc is hitting this nerve. Wow. And that's and, what it was. And, I'm and like, how long they could have you done that a year before? Yeah, but oh. they didn't. No, so oh, what buddy. are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah and, and I feel like you got saddled with being a concussion case in your career a bit. Like people talked about that all yet. Yeah, yeah, I had two. Yeah, but, two concussions. Yeah, but that's not like a two reported back then was like a hundred. Yeah, well, <laughs> we don't know. What do we know? Yeah, they were both pretty big hits. So, whatever. How much time did you miss with those ones? Almost two years. Two years combined, not with the neck thing. That was part of it. That was part of the hit. 
Yeah. But it's not, that was, you were good, just the nerves were, it was a net. That is my theory, and yeah. that is the working theory that that's actually what happened. Oh, okay. Because as soon as they did it, I was didn't have headaches. Crazy. And was able to start getting on the ice. Wow. So. Just ate up so much of it, hey? Yeah, but so what? Oh, yeah. well. No, what are you going to do now? Am I going to look back at that and be like, no, oh, yeah. this is where, like I did for the longest time. I told Marl. Oh, you did? I did. I, I looked back at the career and was like, a little bitter. Oh, a negative at all this stuff. And I even did it when I was retired for the longest time. I, when I did my actual first podcast with Peters and. Yeah, I saw that one. Reve. Uh, yeah. I was like, yes. But I was, for the longest time, I had the mindset that I wasn't happy with my career. But now I look back, I'm like, how, how, yeah, I was happy with I'm it. glad yeah. to hear that. Yeah. No, it's you had like you look back at it. You're like, yeah, it's that was fun. A little bit. I had a great time playing in Buffalo. Yeah. What? what 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 made it snap? Like what made it like you realize? It? I just I think I had to change my mindset about life in general, how it's it's awesome and whatever, and start changing my thought process on like certain things and how, ways to live, lifestyle, everything. I uh, think your, your, kid, of, your kid's playing hockey I got now. Him, I bet yeah, you he's, to do he it. was a big part of my my Sony six playing now and. I want him to know, like he he still doesn't quite understand the whole like you know hockey thing and all that stuff because he wasn't around when I was playing. And I want him to, you know, learn about that, be proud of his dad. And then I look back, I'm like, yeah, I was proud of myself too. Why not? Yeah. You got like yeah. like you're a star, dude. But yeah. that's but you get your own perception of yourself in your head, and you're like, I hear you joke wit sometimes. I get some clips. I don't. I'll be honest. I don't watch it. Oh no, he's got a burner. He must have a burner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just what, hear Wit say. I just hear Wit chirping himself. Yeah, yeah. Wit was and fucking I know you're good. joking around. Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. Fucking, you know how good you were. Yeah, so there yeah, you yeah. Go. I mean, but you it, joke around like yeah, I think self-deprecation. Yeah, is what Wit he, what was he like the well. first defenseman that I ever played with. I think that like had his head up skating and just laser beam passes and yeah, like shot good. passes, yeah. like head up yep. like crazy. Well, I, I have a thing You did where have your head up crazy, I, I, too. You were like Tom Brady back there. Yeah. 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 Me and Tom Brady, well, bunching, so and that's about it. seen above the line, you know? You're so <laughs> oh, yeah, you're dancing out there. But my thing is, and, and we're pretty similar um, in a sense of like, yeah, like things didn't necessarily go for me the way I had hoped, but I... I know, like, in my heart, like, it, it was injuries. And like you just said, like, what are you going to do? I, I mean, yeah. like, what are you going to do? Like, sit there and be better? It was it was injuries. And then in a sense, to make it fun of myself, yeah, there were some there were some re years where making fun of myself, it, it's well worth it. But I look back and I'm like, I played in the NHL. I, I lived out my dream. I didn't win a cup, but I was really close. And and I got hurt. And and it's like, yeah. if if you can't get over that, that's what holds you back in the next step of life. So I love hearing that you've kind of started, you yeah, know, realizing. Buddy. And it's true what Merle said about having having um, your your kids and, and your son. Because even now with Ryder on the ice, I know you're on the ice with your boy. It's like it kind of already has like brought back like a little fire for me. I was talking to Chris Versteeg about. It. He's like, it's great watching your kids play. You get a little bit. It's not necessarily at all the same, but you get a little bit of that rush, right? Where you're like, oh, the games again. You see them fired up to go to the rink, and that's actually made me like miss the game a little bit more in, in, in a way it's where it's exact that's how i feel 100 percent. it's it's how i feel. like i'm so jealous of you buddy you're just like going to the rink it's just beginning for you and who knows he could not even play high school hockey but as of right now he loves it and it's like oh my god I it's bringing back memories for me that the good ones as opposed to the shit yeah there, i mean that's what you can focus on you can focus on that in hockey and in life yeah. like we all have our ups and downs and you know, you start focusing on all those downs, it becomes it's contagious in your own bit. mind. Yeah, yeah right. or you can, th or you can think the other way. You move yourself the other way. So that's what, on top of like hockey, just in life, just trying to focus more on positive things, like yeah. better outlook at life, all that stuff. And what, why regret? Like, what do I regret? I didn't win the cup. I really wanted that. Not that many guys win. Like I know, <laughs> but it's. I don't want that to be the overall thought about my career. The thought should be, oh, I got to play in Buffalo. Great times. Had some good runs. Had some great seasons. Um, it was fun playing. The fans. And then I just started going back there doing alumni stuff. The fans, they don't forget. They love it. Yeah. They're like, it's like, I was like, it was unbelievable. Go back to some like yeah, alumni stuff. They're that. like, they're super appreciative. You see all these people still wearing Conley jerseys it's like wow wow i can't believe that and then you remember like oh yeah that's Fuck what it's yeah. like these are like great people great city it's awesome um, was it was it my message to you that sparked you to 
I don't has, think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I saw. Oh, this you did send me a little highlight reel I, that I had not reel. seen. It was before. like at like the midnight. human highlight reel. I was at midnight one. or something. I was laying yeah. in bed like de- doom I woke scrolling. Up to it. I texted TC. I'm like, saw that. Just saw this. I don't know who put it on. Was it the Buffalo guys that put it, like it on? Sabers buzz. I Someone don't know. put it on. Yeah. And I, I had found not it. Seen I'm it, like, though. oh, I'm gonna send this to TC. I haven't talked to him in a while. How awesome he is! Because it was an unreal highlight video. And I sent it to him the next day. He's like, wow, who did this? This is awesome. Because he doesn't know like how anything works. He's yeah. like, what is this? I, I didn't see it. <laughs> but, like, did you- I thought Army made it for me. <laughs> is, this D- a- is this what AI is? D- DC, I made this for you. <laughs> no, but did you show that to your kid and stuff? Did you show that to your kid probably? Like, yeah, he's awesome. seen him. Yeah, he's seen him. He doesn't, he's, they don't he's, really get it yet. No, he doesn't. He doesn't Our know. kids are yeah. just a month apart. They're yeah. like a little, it's like they're like six months to a year away from probably understanding, understanding it a little mentally, bit more yeah. but um biz always brings up and, and i completely agree with him i'm wondering your opinion like in terms of regrets the only one i really have is maybe not like taking the off ice a little bit more serious too much boring. and i know you were never one of the biggest workout guys like did you but you but you miss maybe misunderstand that so we asked merle because Merle would come, he would, so... Merle makes it so, sound like he never no. did a thing in the summer. Me, For I me? did it. Or me or him? <laughs> yeah, I did it. Uh, I can no. tell you. Uh, he, he would go. I, it he was... Would go. It was. He was in good shape. No, I it was. I don't think I was in that great shape. In, I could have been in better shape in Toronto my first year. But it was... Um, Merle would come... Like he's the original trip extension guy. I don't know if you guys know this. Oh, oh yeah. He extends every I'm about single to deflect trip. deflect away. <laughs> but... Yeah, he's had, he has to start building them in now. Extra day <laughs> yeah. or two. His recovery extend, day. Yeah, there. But he would come He would come in for a weekend, like the skinny house. At a, it's like upstate New York, uh, Finger Lakes region. He'd come to the lake house just for a weekend, and he'd stay. Yeah, he'd end up staying for two or three weeks. <laughs> yeah. So those are somewhat detrimental to my health. But <laughs> we would, I'd, we still have my trainer. He would do like part of the workout. But he'd be like, Colin, why are you doing this? All this extra, like, warm up and all this stuff. Like, guys, like, in there working me for like forty five minutes before Merle even comes and shows up. And, but that that's that's true. But I had to learn that too. I didn't know that when I first got in the league. And then eventually, I needed it, and I had to have a trainer, yeah, like train me. So that took a pro. That was a process too. And I think that was that also helped me. Um, once I was able to realize that there's a next level of shape that you can get into that, I, I did like, and I would keep doing the guy's name is Jay Morgan, Let's throw a shout out to him. He, nice. he was like, he used to come down cause we'd be like at Sunday, I'd be on the margarita machine making marks for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Timmy's like, yeah, we're not driving up there. He's like, I'm calling Jay. He's going to be down here tomorrow. So the trainer, Jay, he would drive down to the house, like an hour drive and set up the, the whole workout. So we didn't really? have to drive up there. So we could just roll out of bed hung. And My favorite memory of done. Merle's uh, summertime was he, so there's a party in, in um, Nantucket every weekend, Memorial Day called Fagawi. And it's for like, you know, I'd say like t- 20 to 28 year olds right it's a little younger so at that time we're, we're younger and he comes i'm coming for that weekend that's gonna be unbelievable yeah i'm gonna get down here this was say may 27th he left my, he left my apartment after the stanley cup finals like oh, june 20th. That, was, that was a real extension, <laughs> that's an absolute right. extension. so the best part is as he's staying he's like i'll just work out with you so the first day we go out we'd had a couple of drinks the night before and we drive to the workout it was like 30 minutes away and he's like Nope. I'm like, what do you mean? Nope. He goes, nope. That's, that's and he right. slept. He slept in my oh car my right outside the gym the whole time. I worked Come out. on. I would have <laughs> even Reggie. Even Reggie got up and went in and did the Roche, workout. Roche was like, he's gonna sleep. You're gonna sleep in the car. Yup. And we get in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I was playing. This was when I was playing after yeah, you, like Switzerland. Yeah. I was done. Yeah, I knew yeah, I, I was done. Like, this, I don't care. I don't need oh to do this God. anymore. So Jeez, what was your experience uh, in Toronto like? Uh, could have been better. Yeah. Yeah. Organization, everything's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it's top notch. But our team, our team, just it's hard when you're not doing well there, you know. No, yeah, we kind of went in the gutter there for a while. We yeah. went in that little tailspin, and it, oh, they like, called it an 18 wheeler tractor trailer crash because we lost 18 games. In yeah, the was oh, like, I was I was injured. I was out. Oh, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was in the press box. Yeah. I had my guy. I had my guy. Was that, guy? <laughs> was that the worst stretch you've ever been on with a team? 
It was on the Islanders. I think the Islanders. Was pro- we only won like 18 games on the Islanders <laughs> out of 82. But probably maybe not it was many 16 games. Not in a row, yeah. 18, was it 16? I don't know. Was it that many? It was bad. It was like real bad. It was getting bad at around like game six or seven. I'm like, fuck. It was like. This is rosters doesn't look I great. I probably should have called a team party by then. Yeah, yeah. I should <laughs> have thought that. Like, you know, well, that would have been on me. I should have probably done a team party. I wasn't doing You're anything injured. else. You're I injured. was injured. I was You're out. injured. I was banged up. Assistant captain. Yeah, hanging out with the wives and girlfriends while you guys were on the road. I just hung out with the girls. Who, who, who was your coach with the Leafs? Ron Wilson. Yeah. Ron. And and, he was pretty yeah. intense too, wasn't he? Not. No, not that. No, I, I thought he was so. good too. I oh. think he was pretty like behind the scenes. He was like... He liked you could talk to him, us. yeah. Like he sit there and have breakfast He'd with him, or whatever. Yeah, he liked to chirp. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he yeah. Did. yeah. I like hey, that. army. I he always had something to him. say. Yeah. Oh yeah, he loved to chirp big time. Yeah, he like that was like different from like when I was with Lindy. It was more he was hidden. Yeah. Yeah, he'd come right out with us and sit with us and eat breakfast yeah. and chirp with the guys and love yeah. laughing and stuff. Yeah. Real sarcastic, you know. Yeah, he was good. I wasn't a big Carlisle fan, to be honest. Yeah, with you. I, 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 who don't, is? don't get me going. <laughs> like, who is? Yeah. Don't get me going with that guy. But, but. You, like, did you were playing in Buffalo? I mean, that's a sports town. Long Island team, not good. But going to Toronto and just being in that craziness there, like, yeah, it was. Did you sign there or get traded? I signed there. Okay, I was still trying to stay in Buffalo, but I was becoming a free agent, and they had just got new ownership my last year there. Pagoulas? Yeah. So they had a lot of money to throw around, and then they ended up signing uh, Billy Leno. Billy Leno. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, you, got nice, you got a nice deal. Oh, yeah. That was, and then disappeared. My job. He had yeah. a great playoff against Philly. I try, I offered them one year, 2.5, to stay. They said no. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was playing. Was he playing on Philly against to, Buffalo? Uh, for maybe, an oh, maybe that's playoff. what it was. And then, and then Buff- they threw him a, yeah. Yeah, they threw him a bone. Yeah. Who that was your money. He was playing with Briere, right? Yeah, that'll help. Oh, that'll help. Yeah, yeah, that Briere can play. I remember Talk about think about those teams you're just talking about. Mero, me, we're talking about this before this. Those couple teams where we went on those deep runs there. Uh, three GMs came out of there from one team. That's Drury, Drury, Briere, Briere, and Greer. Greer. Greer's wow. the, holy shit. Three GMs off of one Could team. You, one year is pretty. I mean, so there's certain players you play with where you can see it in them, where they're just such hockey nerds and they're gonna have to do something. Yeah, after. But they're not even hockey nerds. They're just like knowledgeable hockey leaders. Like when you look at leadership, those are like guys. And I think that those guys getting to Buffalo instead of when we talked about the guys that it came into the league with, I saw what these guys were doing. You're like the what way is they're this? preparing. Yeah. Oh, you're like you're taking a taxi before the team bus to go to the rink to get. <laughs> treatment and work and do this okay i think i might try that i was like jury did it and i'm like okay i'm gonna follow this kid around this guy around like i'll be the little lost puppy following him around he knows how to win or whatever he knows what he's doing i'm gonna do that so i started doing that so it kind of changed that mentality in that way it it goes a it i mean it's contagious yeah it's a culture like it's it's the same our culture was horrible in pittsburgh and, and then, then Crosby Sid came became. and it changed everything example and, boston bruins yeah culture example uh so zidane ochara played with him in long island he got traded away uh, what was he like then as a player was he, he he wasn't he hadn't like developed into his body yet he was like he was off too but yes he would i think they came up you know how you can't throw it in the stands out of your own zone or yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I think that's the char rule. Oh, so you come it, around yeah. the net, go to make a pass, and you just fire it in the stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> off the glass and out, baby. Yeah. Yeah. He was so off, off the, the glass and out, but he missed the, the glass and threw it out, out boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then he just turned into a dominant <laughs> Hall of Fame hey. defenseman. So but he just <laughs> see Susie with the big guns at the top of the front row there. Yeah, just aim there, Zidane, right there, buddy. We'll take the whistle on the D zone. What do you get into that? I can tell you, nobody's gonna outwork that guy ever anywhere. He's gonna. I mean, guys doing triathlons for fun. He, and I bet you he brought that culture, and he was still just he was still real young. What year was he born in? He's like seventy-seven, uh, maybe. Char like is like three forty-seven four. now, isn't he? Probably maybe forty. Maybe. But I, I just think that he goes there, becomes captain, and he's the hardest working, most serious guy. He developed into a player, and then he instilled that culture, and whoever was there with him, like who's going to challenge him too. If you don't work that hard or behave mm-hmm. that way in that manner and 
be a winner and work as hard as you can and, you know, devote your time to the game. Well, then you're out he's here. a leader. It's like, if you're not living up to that, so then everybody has to start living up to that. Like, yeah. then what? You got Bergeron in there. He's in there with them and all those guys. And then he taught like, Marshawn. And they and all, it's just they, it's, it just, and that's why you see how they've been doing for the last whatever. And I've always, I don't like the Bruins. I hated playing against them. It was a pain. It was the worst playing against them because they play hard. They play their system. They play to win. And that's, you look at that from, I don't know, leadership standpoint anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a great point. Um, what else you got, Mark? Yeah, I mean that's it. We're we're here. Philosophical. At, we're here at Gretzky's basement here in Toronto. Do you remember the Gretzky workout video, dude? Do you remember getting recruited by Gretzky by the agency? You got any Gretzky stories you want to share with us? Oh, yeah. From yeah. Early, early on. Yeah, those are back the my younger days. Huge, huge Gretzky fan growing up. Um, didn't get to watch a lot of hockey, but um. They do the agency. We're talking about agents, and you guys had Judd on. You got agents recruiting. I know that now it's like they're recruiting these kids at such a young age. I think when we were playing, it was like right before the OHL draft. You, you were 15, and we had yeah. Bobby Orr came to the house. Yeah. Wow. Those, yeah. those are cool. I, to, did to, you have to try to sign stuff? you to their age? Yeah. Like, like I, my dad in his office at the house I grew up in had the Orr picture. Yeah. And then one day he picked up the phone. He's like, Dan Whitney, he's like, yeah, he's like, Bobby Orr, he's looking at the picture. He's like, what the fuck? He's like, Ryan, we got your agent. I was like, no yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, were, did you go with him? Yeah, I was with did Orr, you? and then Paul Kropelko was like the guy like uh, under Bobby for a while, the Orr hockey group. He was awesome, man. Intimidating guy. When Orr gets mad, man, he gets mad. But he's the nicest, friendliest person alive. Like, what, he used to call my grandmother like a couple times a year, just say hello. Like, the guy was... He was a legend, but in terms of him recruiting young kids, like how does anyone? How did anyone say no to him? Yeah, well, that, so that was, yeah. He, came, yeah, he came to my house in Syracuse, and Merle's you know. is on the margarita machine. You want salt? Bobby? You want a margarita? Yeah, I, I don't remember the exact timing all of it and who was first. Bobby, or you second, hit on sixteen. But then, yeah, but then all of a sudden, it, it was the week. A week later, he's get him and his parents are getting flown to New York City to watch a Rangers game, go to dinner with ninety nine. No afterwards, oh. they came back from that trip and was like, it was yeah, an arms right, I'm going, yeah, I'm going. So then we, uh, yeah, it was. Wow. Yeah, so that was cool. It was that was a uh, IMG. They had. Gretzky and all those other guys it was Mike Barnett JP Barry um Eddie Mio so Eddie Mio came and watched us he watched a couple games of us play Merle yeah and then yeah said hey we'll uh want you to come in and watch us uh game Wayne and go out to dinner and blah, blah blah I'm like holy shit this is really this is really happening I'm 15 this is like insane that this <laughs> yeah. all this stuff is starting to happen like that is the first sign where maybe you're like man like I think I got a chance of playing in the NHL like, yeah people like, are calling like obviously there's something here yeah because it, it gradually started happening that year a lot like over the course of a year there's all these agents at every game that we played in non-stop we're playing in this Metro Toronto Tier 2 Hockey League. It's like a feeder system. Zubris played in that league and then went straight to the NHL from Tier 2. What? Manius yeah. Zubris? Yeah. He, he was a horse. I played with yeah. him, too. He's a monster. Yeah. Um, he was on that second, yeah, but that, he was on we that were, second team. So all this Canada junior hockey now, how these teams are jumping out of Canada hockey out west, that's what this league did. They weren't associated with with cocky independent or so whatever. He's, he's 14 or he was 15 this other kid maglione was 14 they're wearing half shields it was oh, it was whoa. two fight rule it three was, fight. It was it, three fight yeah three fights were, to leave so you could get two fights and oh then the third God. one you finally got kicked out it was it was mayhem that's the no z-back that's the z-back team right yeah, yep. <laughs> how did you do it that we're like that's like young blood shit man i'm going up playing try to Canadian. stay out of fighting with merle merle you guys you know how he talks now he would not stop running his mouth. Oh, Merle's talking so much shit. I, I don't know. It was. I don't think you talked like that in the NHL. No, that, no he that didn't was say because you were. I should have. I should have. I should have stayed know. that way. Dude, you, you NHL, definitely should have. You, you would have. You would have had it. Yeah. You would have rat it. in the NHL. Come and then you on, got up really? There and no, yeah, he, he was quieted a, up. I never. I think he never played with him that long. He was a rat. He was doing it out of respect for the game. He respects the game, but it was. But was when we were like playing tier two before. And I know you were a maniac in college too. Is he never shut up on the ice at all times? 
just yapping every guy on the other team even we get to the bench he's yapping like merle give me a break I need a break from this like just let me just sit here and wow. have some water he's just constantly bickering with it's every slowly team. coming out of him even on the podcast <laughs> now yeah. is it he's we getting got fiery hate, we got a hate text uh text from Bre brendan gallagher because he was very vocal about his hit on uh pellich he called and, me uh, Mur and R.A. pussies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mur, Mur starting to kick up dust. Like, old, like back old, my old ways. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. coming back. He's getting comfortable. So what, he was trying to wind you into fights and stuff or always scrumming no, and stuff? No, he was always just, he just torment the other team. It's just nonstop. Whether you were a tough guy, skill guy, whatever guy, One he was going to chirp you me. until yeah. you just <laughs> were sick of it. And I mean, they're all coming. I after would have them coming come after, after me, so they wouldn't be playing defense or trying to take my head off. So instead oh. of like worrying about defense, I just think he liked chirping them. Just he was better than all of them. So how yeah. how was, was he? Any how was he with the ladies uh, when you play with him? <laughs> The Merle? I, I used to be the designated driver back yeah, then that's in the really? junior team. Yeah, because yeah. you had, you had a, you had a gambling like, addiction. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> you had to I, trade to get the turns. So I'm gonna, if I drink, minutes, I'm going to forget to get the late game back 45 in. minutes away. The ladies? Back then, no, he, was, he wasn't. I was too focused. He was too I was focused on it. I was he was. Crosby. I was he dialed was. in oh, on everything. Fuck off. I, I, no, not like playing. That's but like, why you guys could relate when you I was a sober driver. I was a girlfriend wasn't going to get in my way of doing, like, getting Yeah, you were hockey obsessed. I was hockey obsessed. Good yeah. not, not, like, obviously not the player he was. I was hockey obsessed like him. Did you have any thought of college or you were OHL from? Uh, I think it wasn't as big then, right? Like it, college or oh, I was, it was like after my freshman year. So ninth grade year, it was still like college. I think at that point in time, and then I think it was that tier two junior league that we got into was a Metro Toronto league. They were all going to the, then it was, there was, Oh, we started to hear about this OHL thing. I was like, what is that? Oh, this is how you get to the NHL. I'm like, all right. Get me there as quick as I can get Let's there. Let's get to, I want to go to the NHL. You weren't there when Corey Pecker was there in the area, were you? Okay, but then definitely not. No, but why is Corey Pecker, yeah. Well, I just could sound from here. You might have been there with him. You were, you were drafted there. Is that where you played junior? He was at, he was right after me. Okay. Yeah. Because because the fans were pretty rowdy in Erie. Like I, I wasn't expecting that when I went and played in there. Were they the same when you were there? Yeah, they were pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you play, Biz? North Bay, then Saginaw, and then Owen Sound. What years were you there? My draft year was 03, so I was in 01 in North Bay. Oh, yeah, you're much younger. Yeah. Yeah. But you, I only was, played two, you only played two years in the yeah, two they, years. They actually, they actually won the league when I was playing in that in that four-year span. Who won the league? Erie had. They did? Yeah. Who was their big star then? Uh, I think Corey Pecker was one of them. They had uh, uh, Boys, Brad Boys. Brad Boys. Yeah, yeah I played with Boys. Boys. And Boys was an underage my last year there. But, yeah. Yeah, he was, and he was, yeah, he was a good top notch captain guy material. Yeah. They went to the, yeah, when they, the culture there had changed and they ended up pulling one through. And the reason I ask is because like, I remember how rowdy their fucking crowd was and they had a guy on their team score 50 goals are over 50 goals and when he hit the 50 goal mark his name was Corey pecker so the whole crowd yeah threw, i do remember they threw dildos no, they the didn't. oh yeah <laughs> oh. in the o they <laughs> hit these kids are i don't remember that yeah they throw dildos that's on a the degenerate yeah crowd. oh it was yeah degenerate. i mean so you, like i mean you're a kid and you hear about that it's kind of like you hear about like black sabbath like biting off a bat's head in a fucking you know in the newspaper you're like what this is what's happening at these concerts it's like I'm like, I want to go play in Erie, man. They're throwing dildos on the ice. <laughs> That's uh, Erie. I think 99 is actually here, so we got to wrap this up. All right, so, TC. Uh, well, hey, nice here. Here. Hey, How about that? Reunited. Awesome, man. Hey, you go from getting the, the full game experience to the full basement experience. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, thanks for having me, guys. Thank you, TC. Had a great time. You're Fun talking to you guys. You're best. I You're love a great your teammate, TC. Love great you, buddy. Chat. Love you guys. Thanks. Before we go any further, I got to talk to you about Kraken. Today, we're talking about Kraken, one of the OG crypto platforms. These guys have been around way longer than the hockey team for over a decade. In fact, the Seattle Kraken are new. Kraken, the OG crypto platform, is not that new. And Kraken's world-class security is like having an all-star goalie protecting your assets 24-7. It gives you peace of mind when it comes to trading. With over 190 cryptocurrencies available, there's something for everyone here. Or maybe you're looking for new ways to approach your strategy in crypto. The Kraken Learn Center is an awesome educational resource for all experience levels. So join the 10 million plus clients already using Kraken's intuitive platform to buy crypto. Go to kraken.com slash chicklets. That's kraken.com slash chicklets. 
K-R-A-K-E-N.com slash chicklets and see what crypto can be. Not investment advice. Crypto trading involves risk of loss. Thank you so much to TC, Tim Conley. Awesome guy. I, I really enjoyed him kind of opening up a little bit. And he, 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 him talking about never wanting to, to be a part of, of talking about his career and, and, and appreciating it, 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 it kind of it was shocking in a way that he was willing to open up with us. And I like that because he, I've known him for so long. And, and he was, check, like we said in the interview, check out his YouTube highlights. He was a game breaker, an incredible player. So thank you very much to him. It's Masters Week, guys. And, and it's my favorite week of the year. I always say Masters Week is my favorite sporting event of the season. It's not just about the Masters. It's about, you know, NHL playoffs are starting. You know that, that spring is, is arising. Arising? Arise? Arised? Arisen? Arisen! <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't all talk guys. Today. I'm awake. I'm awake. <laughs> I'm, oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> awake. <laughs> but Augusta, boys. I'm looking forward to this week. Here's the issue is Scotty Scheffler is, is, is basically like Tiger Woods now. And if Scotty whoa, Scheffler whoa. putts. Really? Yeah, he's really hitting. Like he hits the ball the last two years better than anyone ever since Tiger. His strokes gained, which is basically like ball striking, like fairways hit, greens hit. It's at a level above the competition similar to Tiger in his heyday. Yeah, easy putt. The problem is sometimes he can't putt. Like, he's like me. Like, he, he, he cannot putt. So he's figured it out a little bit. I guess the last three weeks, he's plus um, putting stats. And, and so uh, this is an exaggeration. If Scheffler putts good, not even great, he'll probably win the Masters by five or six shots. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't dislike Scotty Scheffler. All I want is a back nine that's exciting. Two years ago, Scheffler ran away with it. I think he four or five putted the last hole and still won by a couple shots. Last year, Rom kind of ran away with it. The Masters, they say it doesn't begin till the back nine on Sunday. I just want two, three, maybe four guys, if I'm getting greedy, in the hunt on Sunday of the back nine. So I cannot wait. Um, I was looking. I mentioned Will Zalatoris. I'm a big Will Zalatoris fan. It would be kind of crazy if he were to win the Masters, uh, but that's somebody I'll be rooting for. Ludwig Biz. We talked about Ludwig Alberg. 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 I don't even know how you say his last name, so I just call him Ludwig or Ludwig. He is that new superstar Biz on um. What was our podcast? Oh, Subpar. Subpar. We talked about him. Yeah, that's he's a, guy. a stud. He's a stud. Stallion. Stallion. So maybe you could make some money betting, betting on him, top no, 10, top 20. No, you know who's going to be winning? Who? Justin Thomas. And then he's going to be doing a sandbagger with us. But he's I got won't a new be caddy. He fired his caddy. Yep. I won't be watching. I'm actually boycotting the Masters after uh, we found out that they, in fact, do kill squirrels on the golf course. That's why you never see them there. So I have aligned with PETA. We're actually going to be putting out a, a documentary, a behind-the-scenes documentary of the murdering of all the squirrels at Augusta, the cult. So. You guys Bases can have on fun watching your, your, your cult broadcast. I'm good. Any final notes, boys, before we move it along? Wait, did you catch the curb finale last night? No, what? no. I got to catch up on that whole season and kind of watch it through. I've seen bits and pieces. Uh, was it good? Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I mean, no surprise, he, he tied it into another infamous finale that you probably figure out. But yeah, great season. Great show. But boys, uh, long one today. Let's wrap it up. And we'll Not see for you. Week. All right, you going to sleep now? Yeah, you could catch up on some of that. Sandbagger Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Tune in. Don't miss it. Don't miss out, baby. Peace.